Yes, what I guess we've got today. I've been on him like a League Two fullback for months, man. Mark, <laughs> welcome. Thanks for coming on, mate. No worries. Cheers, lads. It's been a pleasure. Looking forward to it. Uh, what I was going to say, mate, you're looking tremendous, by the way. That's the best I've seen you. You've grown the band that a bit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lockdown look, isn't it? Apparently, I've had the hair banding and everything. They cut me off window, so... <laughs> <laughs> mate, do not copy him on anything, man. <laughs> I know, mate, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I messaged him. I messaged him every Rangers player that comes on. I messaged him, and he he's gave me a full rundown of you, of you, player, person, every man. Has he? Yeah, he better said better said some good stuff. Has he? I need to ask you as well, mate. I've admired you for far for a while because that physique, mate. Their shoulders, man. What are you? What are you benching? <sighs> mate, you're not going to believe this. I I don't do weights. I don't do upper bodies. So I generally couldn't tell you what me. The one rep maxes, I, I don't know, I don't do it, so. So what do you do then, just press up yourselves? No, no, I just do leg weights, to be honest, like, and like, like, like compound moves, like leg press, squatting, RDLs, and that just kind of maintains the rest of my body, so I'm, I'm quite fortunate, to be honest, like, I can't lie, I get away with it, so. Mate, do you watch John Taraj? Do you watch John Taraj? Yeah, yeah. I'm like Johnny Drama when I look at your drama, The coffee plants. <laughs> Go away, there's, there's a few of them lads around. Ask where's Fodder him. <laughs> <laughs> mate, they have toothpicks in there. A couple of toothpicks. Oh, mate, them. funny. We used, to, we used to absolutely batter a lot of them. So mate, he hates it as well, doesn't he? He hates it, man. Yeah, he hates it. He hates it. Funny, man. Uh, like I was going to say as well, mate, nine million pound man. <laughs> That's tremendous, by the way. See if somebody yeah. got me for nine million quid, I would be Billy Big Bollocks, man. Nah, I don't be daft, man. It's football, isn't it? It's the way, it's the way it goes. It happens. Fortunate enough to to get myself in that position, do I mean, to, to look after my family and that. So, very, very grateful for that for that chance. So, can't complain. You've got the shoulders to handle that £9 million price tag, young man. I love you to fling me <laughs> a boot. If I came to the derby, would you just fling me a boot for a night? Yeah, I, I, I try, eh? Like, I'll give you a best go. <laughs> Tremendous, right, mate? We'll get out of the career. You're from South Shields. Right. What was uh, what was that bringing like there? Is it quite rough? Yeah, <laughs> some places I don't get as wrong like everywhere, but like it's quite a coastal town. So I was fortunate to like have a, a nice beach and that. We used to go up the fair, bit of crack with the lads and have a bit of fun. Do you know what I mean? But the way I grew up, it was mainly parks, footy, and um, play, play, play foot with my pals every day, every night, in from school until I had my mum shout for us for my tea to go back. Go back home, so that's kind of my upbringing. Part of council, council stayed group of 10, 12 lads playing footy every night, which was which is good. Did you play football on the beach? Ah, uh, sometimes. The, Mate, that's right. That's, that's where you that, got the calves, man. That's, that's where you that's got the nice. calves. I think that's where I got my touch from. Bouncing <laughs> 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 everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Um, so when did Sunderland pick you up? Was it just playing for a local boys club? Yeah, so my dad, my dad managed a, a local team in, in South Shields. It was Bolden, Bolden Colts it was. And, uh, I played from them for when I was six years old, seven. And then I got picked up by by Sunderland when I was seven, ten and eight years old and kind of never looked back really. It was, it was local for me. It was, it was a great opportunity and yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good chance to go and play football at a, at a better level. Mate, I always wondered this. Like, see when a player plays under his dad? Was, he, yeah. was the team instructions just to pass the bottom up? Yeah, pretty much kicking to me. I used to, I used to be, believe it or not, I used to be quite, quite fast back in the day. So just kicking them behind, get on the end of it, and sticking them in the back of the net was kind of the the, the team model oh, back then. So it was good, it was good fun, nice and easy. Is he quite hard on you, your dad? Ah, uh, he's quite quite tough. Like on a match day, you'd be alright with us. But as soon as I would get to all, that was that wasn't good enough. This wasn't good enough, and straight in the garden, practicing on more stuff. What I, a chance I'd missed or something I'd done wrong in the game, back in the garden, and when I got home and, and worked on it, so it was it was good. We, we, we bonded a lot like that. We had a we had a big garden, fortunate enough, and he, he taught us a lot of a lot of the stuff that I, I know today. So yeah, grateful for for the, the chance he gave us. And see on that as well, you said that you went into Sunderland Academy at seven or eight. Like there's a lot of talk up here if that's a good or a bad thing going to an academy that young. Do you think yeah. it helped you as a kid? Um, I think it helped us back then, yeah, I, I, I do. But now going forward, listen, my boys in in the like the, the early stage of, is of the Dirt Derby Academy and it's great. It gives them the platform to, to better his skills and, and develop his technique or whatever. But 
I do think there's a time and place of, of how early you do get kids in the academies because it's it's long, it's 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 tough, and you know you know what it's like. Football's football's a tough industry to get in. And I think the earlier you start, you can maybe lose sight and lose track of the end goal if you've been in there for a while. And you get kids come in 14, 15, hungry and ready to go, and they progress really quick because the the the, the missed out and all that progression. Mm-hmm. When I think some kids can get comfortable in the environment now, so. I think it's a I think it's a toss up of how how young and how early you do get into it and how much you you willing to progress your child and push your child going forward. Right, be honest. Were you a Sunderland fan? I was a Sunderland fan. Yeah, I was. I was a United fan, a Man United fan, and a Sunderland fan. It's funny enough, but before I got signed for Sunderland, I used to be at like a, a, a Man United school of excellence kind of thing. It was basically just like a a sideshow event of a Man United academy, and it was based in Sunderland. I used to go there like twice a twice a week and uh, I managed to go to the old Man United training ground I met all the the legends Michael Beckham Gates all them lot watched them train in the um, autographs afterwards and that's kind of how I got to be a United fan um, then I joined Sunnan and kind of that dream disappeared <laughs> <laughs> oh, please tell me please tell me that Kevin Kyle was not your hero growing up no, I, I, obviously I, I played played under him. Like I, I was a youth team player back then. I, I trained with him a few times. I actually cleaned Kevin Carl's boots for for a period of time. No way, man! Uh, yeah, so don't shit all over him. <laughs> nah, there, there's a few headers. No, I think he, I think he had his feet up his head at some point. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> nah, how was Kevin with the young boys, man? He was alright, you know. He, he, he gave him a bit of stick and that as as they all did back then, uh, but. I actually, I got on I got him well with him. He was, he was a he's a good lad and he did, he done actually well for Sunderland during that period of time that we we needed we needed to win games and get where to where we need to be. So he's he's actually a good player for him. Oh, be honest, I bet you hundred percent he was a shite tipper. He's tight as crap, man. Was he? <laughs> I I didn't I didn't know him back then. I was I was too young to to like get to know him on that kind of level. But but did he give you a few quick for cleaning his boots? Did, no, no chance. I, I think, looking back now, I, I probably got done over. To be honest, I probably got a high five or a handshake or <laughs> a, 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 an old t shirt that he had. <laughs> but no, I, I, I didn't get I didn't get looked after like that. Unfortunately, amazing uh, academy days are the best, mate. What was it like uh, at Sunderland? But it was Kevin Ball a coach in there because he's yeah. like renowned for being a tough, tough guy. Yeah, was oh, he like that with the young boys? Yeah, it was class. It was. It was Unbelievable pace. To, we we were fortunate. We had the, the the brand new academy built in 2003. I think it was. So it was, back then it was probably one of the better academies in the whole of the whole of Europe. Apparently, and um, to play under somebody like him took no nonsense. I remember going to the first team a couple of times, come back down. He's like, I don't care who you are. You've not made it yet. You're back with the boys now. You you, you go after again, and he gave a real fundamentals and. and Playing for a team and playing for um, a group of lads, willing to work for each other day in day out, and honestly, mate, it was class. We had, we had such a good team, so many good laughs, and yeah, it was it was brilliant. Probably one of the, the best days. And I was fortunate to, to to be in that academy. Like I know some people find it difficult at times, living away from family or whatever. But I was fortunate with the group of lads we had. It was it was good crack. With Kevin, with Kevin Ball, treat like first team players. Like would he go through years even at a young age? I oh, mean, we'd smash her. You would absolutely nail her. Like, I remember, I remember one of the boys. He played. He, he, he scored a wonder goal first team into the game. Right, right. This right back runs down the wing, stanches it, top bins, runs away, starts celebrating all this. And Bordy's like, "All right, fair enough." Five minutes later, he gives the ball away, misses a tackle, and I think he gives away a foul. He did the goal. He drags him after fifteen minutes. He goes, "I don't care how good you think you are." Get off my pitch and be crap. <laughs> oh, man. I remember, the, I remember this boy like trudging off like this, thinking, "No, oh, I've just scored a world deal." You drag ten minutes later. That, that's what it's like. You just kept everyone on his toes. You thought, no matter how good you were, you just keep your level headed and want you to keep going, working hard, and focus on what's what's important. He's you mentioned there that you were uh, you were up to in the first team. I always ask who who was good to be in the first team and who, who was the ones that were on you constantly. Uh, <laughs> I always, I always remember Kieran Richardson used to batter the boys. Like being the lads now, we're, we're still talking about how hard he was. I remember going away like my first preseason away with the first team. So I'm, I'm training, doing like a crossing and finishing drill. I'm obviously left footed crossing the balls. He goes, Waggy. He goes, Yeah, Kieran. He goes, What foot are you? 
I goes, but lefty goes, well, start using it then. I'm thinking, oh, God, he's, just, he's dug us out in front of the whole team, the coach and staff. I'm thinking, he's on me, yeah. So the next ball, I miss front post. Next one, I kick out a play. He goes, Maggie, get yourself on the right side. You might be better with your right foot. <laughs> and he's, he was just one of them. Like, just I'm guessing his level of demands from being at United, he just wanted players to just raise, raise the game and... Yeah, he was, he, he was quite difficult to try and impress. But he had players like um, Paul McShane, got on really well with. Andy the Sherman The Sherman yeah, he's, he's a good lad. Um, and just, I think if pe- people, a lot of the team were, were good with you if you worked hard. I think that's kind of what Roy Keane at that time installed in the team. Like, if you weren't to work graft with each other, then you would, you would get on fine. And... We were we were technically all right players. I remember some kids coming up and just being way off it and never never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> How would Keane take to the boys that were miles off it? Would he tell them right there and then? Oh, he, oh mate, you, he would batter them. It, it, honestly, it was painful at times. Luckily, I, I kind of got away with it. I, touch wood, I never, I've ha- never had like a run in like that. But he used to come up. You 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 train a mother, so you, are you sure? Are you sure you you want to be here? And just do that patronise and like question of, are you think you're good enough to be? And you see the boys like shaking and trembling, <laughs> and that was that was them going on. It was it was painful at times, but that was just the way he is. And if you weren't ready to, I don't think it was like the technical side of it as much because he knows people had bad days. It was if they were willing to, if they weren't ready to run around and tackle. If he hated people not tackling. Not getting stuck in the, that was his, that was his pet hate. Yeah, see, see how you said he was like that with younger boys as well. Would he be like that the first team, like the best players in the team as well, or would he? Would yeah. they just leave it? The best players in the team. He was the best player in the team still. <laughs> <laughs> you joined, you joined in training and like pop boxes, passing, passing drills, games, and everything. You still run the show because he, he, he was only what maybe two, three years being done. Then he was still, he was still right at it, just hungry. Smashing the lads, the yeah, arm. Oh, it, it, it was funny. And, oh, me being a young kid, I'm thinking the, the manager's nailing the boys here. Like, what do we do? So he, he just loved it. If, and if you laid one on them or smashed one the first team, that was like extra points. You were <laughs> you were playing on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> would, uh, would any of the boys ever give him a go back? Oh, everyone fights a lot. Kavanagh, Graham Kavanagh, give him, used to give him an order stick. I, I remember playing a Resi game once, and. Um, but I mean, fortunately, I was I wasn't playing. We, we got absolutely battered off a local team, and then um, he's called. He wasn't even at the game. He called me back with the academy after the game. It was like ten o'clock at night in the meeting room. Just I remember him just going through all the team saying, "Oh, this is crap." And I remember Kavanagh saying, "Oh, listen, it was one of them games. So like, this wasn't ideal. Boys were off at one by bar, and then and Cav going face to face with each other. It was and this like as a young kid again. Then sitting around thinking. Am I ready for this? <laughs> I'm going to get knocked out by the manager if I don't, if I don't perform. So it, it, it was fun. You know. uh, he gave you a debut, though. Uh, did, could you tell he liked you quite quickly? Yeah, I, I, I always remember Bo, like Kevin Ball said, it was like the gaffer likes the way, the way you play. You, you, you give 100% to the team. You work hard. You're, I, I, I developed quite quick that season. So I, I, the first year scholarship, I was quite normal size, <laughs> if, if that's what you're saying. Then the second year, I come back. I went to Malia in the in the off season, come back massive. <laughs> I don't know what happened in that in that t- week away, but um, I, I come back and I, I I just kind of developed as a player. I, I got quicker, I got stronger, I got a bit more powerful, and I was scoring goals. And I think that's just kind of liked how just aggressive it was with the, with with the ball and without it. And the guy uh, Bolly at that time said he likes just the way you are and, and who you are around the place and. He said he wants to train with you, wants you to train with the first team over the Christmas period. So I just thought kind of nothing of it really, do you know what I mean? Just kind of making up the numbers. And then um, I remember an hour and a half before the kick-off, kick he kind of just flips the board over nonchalant. He's like, yeah, this is the team. Wild Corn and Jones in front of them. Look, and I'm thinking, is that, is that me? It's like, no chance. I've just been texting him an hour ago, like I'll be home for Christmas dinner soon. <laughs> like, I won't be long. And then that, I ended up I ended up playing the game, and I remember him just saying to him, he says, "Listen, you work work really hard. I love your energy. I love your desire." He says, "I know it's United. I know it's going to be a tough game, but just go and do what you've been doing for the the ends and the reserves, and you'll be fine." And, and that was it. Was your, so was your mum and dad leaving at the game? Yeah, they, so they, they came to the game. I got managed to get them tickets. They all they all got there, and yeah, it, was, it worked out to be a, a pretty pretty good day. And obviously, part part of the result, it was it was a good day for myself and my family.
obviously you've played at a lot of levels like how good who was it who's the two centre backs it Ferdinand and Vidic Ferdinand and Vidic aye how good are we talking mate they were, these, were, these were on a different level so I'm making runs and doing stuff and they're there like five yards before us I'm thinking how, how are you even like that that advanced I'm I'm thinking I'm quite sharp yeah and I just remember the first five minutes of the game the balls got played up long it's when they go to Kenwin Joel and descended but I mean I just remember Vidic coming around just clattering his right and his bugle I'm thinking oh my god this is, this is the last thing I want Vidic head put in his whole game but it, 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 was, it, it was a great experience just to see how, how them boys play the speed that they played at the level of just like attention to detail was, was incredible, mate. So good, so good. How did you do, all right? I think I, I think I done all right. I, I got one of the match for Sunderland. So no way, did you? <laughs> yeah, I got one of the match. And I, I remember, so at the end of the game, I got one of the match for Sunderland. Rooney got one of the match for United. So I'm I'm in the like, the press room upstairs waiting to do the speech. And I, I, I go to Rooney, I go, oh, thanks, thanks for that idea, Rooney. He's looking at us thinking, Watch this key on. I was like, you just got us 45 points from your fantasy team. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I, think, I think he scored and he got two assists or something because he got a load of points so I was buzzing he'd be captain. Did, <laughs> so you, did, you, did you tell him that at Derby when he came? Uh, no, I, I, I've, I've done press, yeah, like I've done stuff like that in the past and it's been mentioned stuff but I've not, I've not obviously told him again since. I think it'd be embarrassing if I told him again now. <laughs> Amazing, man. Uh, what did Keith say after the game? Did he like, praise you in the dressing room and that? No, he just he pulled. No, after the game, he was, he, Kino was a he was a, he was a write off. You, you you can't have a chat with a gaff after the game. It's 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 not happening. So you you just waited a couple of days later and said, listen, bar the result, you were you were brilliant. You, you were you know tough. I was I played up front. I went the left wing. He says you, you done everything I asked for you. So I appreciate that and keep your head down. But I remember playing that game. The next day I had off. The Monday I was back training with the under 18s. Kevin Ball was like. I don't care what you've done yet, you're back with me now. So I was training with them again. So and you know what? I, I, I loved it. It was class. He kept us on his toes. He pushed words. It kind of made us the type of player I am now. Do you know what I mean? Just try and keep me head on the ground at all times and keep working hard. What's the, what, what's, can you remember the worst you've ever seen him go? Yeah, I, I remember. I think that we might have been, we might have been away to, to Blackburn. I was on the bench. Was it Black? Yeah. And I, I think we're losing one nil half time. He comes in. He, there's this. <laughs> there's this um, tactics board in the, in the middle of the room and mate, it gets volleyed so far across the dressing room and he just lays it everyone you've got like people like sitting like this hands down he comes up smacks the hand round the heads are falling like this he's he just completely gone and but he's slapped by no so like he's like the lad's sitting like this and he slaps the hand away so like the arm's falling like <laughs> and I'm just thinking I'm, I'm sitting there please don't come for me I'm, I'm on the bench hoping that he doesn't come for me that's how bad it's getting the lads are like hiding from drinks bottles and stuff flying everywhere. But it was just it was just pure passion and I'm yeah. thinking I'm looking there thinking, I love this, like it's it's mm-hmm. class, do you know what I mean? Like this is what I, I like I want I wanna win, I wanna win games and you just pure raw emotion and wanted the best from everybody and if they weren't up for it he was he wasn't frightened to tell you and I think that's kind of how I was taught with Kevin Ball, Bo Lead and the Roy Keane and they were kind of the same same look, just Love winning, love winning games. That's the way a youth team manager should be, and get you ready for the first team, mate. Oh, mate, it, it, was, it was so important for us. You see, yeah. don't get us wrong, I, I know football's changing, no academies and the 23s, and obviously the development's changed. I do get that. But we were going from under 18 football to reserve team football, and you had six or seven players that weren't playing on the weekend coming to the reserve team. One, they might have been injured. Two, they might have been pissed off that they weren't playing. Three, they might have been out of favour so they were kicking lumps out of you not happy running around like they were trying to prove points trying to get in the team and like we young kids have them to deal with this and mm. it just got us ready so so much quicker than what I, I feel the under 23 league does at the minute we're playing first team footballers at 17, 18 year old and it was, it was massive for our development uh, sorry to keep going on but I'm just obsessed with Roy Keane but like, have you yeah. seen when like, Dwight York and Andy Cole and that came and yeah, they, yeah. they were teammates yeah. would, you, would you be friendly with them or would you hammer them as well no you'd, you'd hammer everyone he, honestly he, was, he wasn't bothered and I think York Ian Cole knew how he was and they just kind of got on with it and like I remember them always saying because I used to do finishing drills with, with York Ian Cole and they used to be like whatever you do just 
keep your head down, keep working hard because if you let slip once, you'll you'll destroy you and you won't be back up here. So I was kind of fortunate that I had people around us like that that would help us. And there were two two great guys to be honest. I was very fortunate to play with two heroes going up in my and watching watching United and yeah, it was class. And I always kind of when I made. When I was in the first team, made sure I'd, I'd work my nuts off. I mean, I was I was always the first one out there. Last, I know it sounds daft and whatever, but as a young kid, you had to make an impression. And we were a, a, a small group of five, six of us that go from the academy up. We would always be first out doing the the babes, the balls, and all that stuff. And he kind of just liked how we were as, as kids, kind of just doing what we needed to do for the team. So um, I think he always appreciated our little little kick that we had. Love that. Did you ever get an eye with them? Mate, I, I, nah. I, my brain went, nah, bastard. Because yeah, you're to make, you're to make, I love it, innit? Yeah, apparently, apparently so, I. But, <laughs> but yeah, I remember, I remember one, me and one of the other lads going on like a, it might have been before the, the, the my debut, we went like doing like a warm weather training camp, whatever, for four or five days. And um, all the lads went on the night out, but we had to, we were only 17, we had to come back before 10 o'clock or whatever. We are like, Agent to stay out, all the lads say, No, I'll stay out, come on, we'll be fine. They got like one then, but that look, lads, you know how we, we've got your back and all this, and thinking, Would we be all right here? Yeah, but if I'm a new fine man walking in at 10 o'clock, when we came to Saturday, and I'm thinking, I'm so glad we came back now because it could, it could, have, been, it could have been a whole lot worse. <laughs> what was he saying, waiting for you to come back again? Yeah, like the, the, well, the staff were just kind of having a drink at the bar, do you know what I mean? I'm thinking if we turned up at like one in the morning. <laughs> But mate, I also think you maybe with the bust off you a wee bit if you if you broke it off. Looking back, I think you probably would have like appreciated like the banter side of it, but there and then you're probably thinking as a seventeen year old kid you don't want to start doing it out out after I mean. Last question on him because we've had a few ex Sunderland boys that played under him on it and they've said if you're late, you're done, man. <sighs> he hated it. Punctu- like punctuality, he was massive. Late for meetings, t- on the training pitch, anything. It- Horry hated it. He said, "Like it, it's not hard to get you some on time," and I kind of agree with it. I, I, I do, I do agree with that. Like people turning up two, three minutes time late for meetings when you've been sat in the hotel for four hours, it's, it's yeah. not that hard to hard to do. So yeah. Was there anyone? Was there anyone that would constantly be like Anthony Stokes? <laughs> That's what Ross Wallace said. That is uh, every every single meeting stalks you as late. Every <laughs> Why would you be late every week for a right team? It's just the way. Just you just you just turn up late. You'd have his cap on his earrings and it's like stalks you what you're doing. Hundred quid, two hundred quid, three hundred quid. I just remember the night numbers. Stalks you, you find me. You just be like, what? just made him sing like everything. Just every single meeting stalks you as late. Love that man, brilliant. Uh, right, mate. You mentioned all the players that were there. Like, how tough is that for an academy kid to get in and be a regular ahead of guys like Andy Cole, Dwight York? Tough. Yeah, it was, it was very difficult because we we did have a, a strong lineup. Maybe fortunate for me, they were coming to the end of the career, so it was a bit easier to have that fresh energy, whatever. But you had your Cole, there was Cameron Jones, there was Gabriel Cisse, Michael Chopper, Darren Murphy. There was, there was a lot of experienced players there. And I, I don't know what this, this situation was, but looking back, players might have been out of contract, leaving, falling out of favour. And I just kind of took the opportunity. And I think what, what I've touched on, there was, there was a group of there was not just me individually. So I think he probably thought if I put two or three of them in together, they would work a bit better. And, and we did, we all got the opportunities. And we're looking back, I, I, I would like to have maybe stayed a bit longer, but... That's football and it happens, you, you, you move on and you, you go, to, go to a different club. But we were we were very fortunate that time to play under what I say is like a, a great a great player, a great captain and what, what a good manager he wants to mean. I'm, I'm always grateful for that opportunity he gave us, do you know what I mean? Did you think Keane would go to the top as a manager? Honestly? Sorry? Did you think he would go top level Keane as a manager? Yeah, because of the personality he was. He would, he would, he would automatically think that he would get to the very top because of what he's achieved in the game. But for one reason or another, he's not. He's not quite done that. I, I maybe I think he's. He's probably thought I've tried it and not, I don't really want to do it anymore or or whatever. But just as as desire to win, you probably would have thought you would have. You would have got to the very very top. Right, mate. You end up going it alone. Whose decision was that? Was it yours or was it the manager's? Um, at that time, it was. I was playing for for the like the reserves. The 
And I think it was Neil Bailey, the, the like the reserve coach, reserve manager, Kevin Ball said, um, I, I would probably go and it was like the latter half of the latter half of the season at Charlton. He's like, I'll probably go and get some games. Um, you've, you've played, you've made a debut. You've, you've played a few games. You've been in and out, but now it's probably time to go to that next level. And um, that's when Charlton came in. And then don't, don't know. It was just before, I'd, just before I'd um, made my debut, just before the Christmas the following year. So I'd been in and out the first team, played, played a few like resi games, or whatever. And it was the October I got told. Talking about came in first and did I want to go and play and spoke to my agent like you do, spoke to my family, it was a long way to go for me. But at that time, me and me, me and me, me now and my wife were just thought, yeah, let's let's go and try something different. So we moved to London for three months and and that was it. You're moving to London, mate, you're not wanting the wife to me, yeah. Yeah, no, no, we we only just got together and she was in the middle of uni and college, whatever, so we we were packed up bags and Drove down to London, lived in the hotel for <laughs> lived in the hotel for four months. So that was oh, good fun. Uh, but where you found your feet was Leicester. Well, what was that about Leicester that, that made you play so well there? Um, I think it was the the, the manager and the, the staff. Do you know what I mean? They they were very. They knew a lot about my background. They knew who I was. The manager Nigel Pearson um, played up in up in the northeast with Middlesbrough. He, he, he had an affiliation with Newcastle, like. And Walsh, the the, the scout that scouted us, knew a lot about us, and that made us really feel welcome. Do you know what I mean? They, they knew who I was as like a player. They found out a lot of stuff about how I play. And don't get us wrong, it took us a while to, to get into the team and play games. But for the develop, development wise, they were a successful team the year before. Just a couple more from League One. The the club we had an amazing stadium, the King Power Stadium now, and it was a great place to go and learn and mixture of youth and experience and I made I made a lot of good friends there which kind of helped us settle in really good so obviously playing games was was the most important thing for me then and I managed to play overall I think there's about 40 odd games that season which was which was crucial crucial for me. Mate Nigel Pearson looks like he can go as well man going for Roy Keane and Nigel Pearson is he just as... Yeah it, it, it was all right to be honest he's a, he's a lot more calmer than what I expected I, I kind of heard stuff when he went, he went, but it wasn't that often. He was a bit more, a bit more subdued, a bit more laid back, and he he was great with me. So it was just like a little, his little son, and brought us up and developed us into the player like I am now. He, he taught us a lot, him and his staff, and I learned a lot from the players I played with, Stevie Howard, I think Stevie Howard and Philip Jordy, and we kind of work, kind of worked them all together. Was he is, is he a good laugh, Nigel Pearson? Because he said the cut lines in press conference and that are quite funny to to journalists. Can he be quite? <laughs> I don't think he, he was meant to be as funny as what he meant to be, but yeah, he, he, he enjoyed a bit of banter and stuff like that, so I can't, I can't complain. He had, he had a good, good bit of crack, we shared him. Mate, his hair's cut every day, man. I've never seen him where, without his hair cut, man. Without his hair out of place, I know. It's, it's up and straight every day, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure it's a Lego. I'm, we're doing the Lego attachments. I'm sure that's for them. <laughs> So see when you were flying at Leicester, obviously, did you think you were going to go back to Sunderland and, and play in the first team? Um, well, that's kind of what the, the goal was. I remember yeah. speaking to sort of Steve Bruce at the time, said, go and play, go and play some games, um, come back, and the plan is to, to, to bed into the first team. So I had a successful year, uh, came back, went away pre-season, had a good pre-season uh, tournament, I scored a couple of goals. And the first uh, three or four games, I was kind of in the squad. I was getting on, making appearances, uh, made a start in the cup, and I thought this is kind of like the natural progression. And then all of a sudden, I remember deadline day, just <clears throat> my agent ringing us saying, "Oh, Sunderland want to want to sell you." And at the time, um, I didn't think much of it, but I spoke to Steve Bruce at the time. He said, "Oh, we want to bring in a striker. Um, we can't kind of offload." Players that weren't offload, we needed to create some funds, um, and there were, it was just kind of one of them things where I was had a good year, I was young, and they could could get a bit of money in for us. So that was kind of that was it. Didn't really have much of a say, and off I went. What well, uh, what was Steve Bruce like? He's another Man United legend, mate. You must yeah, have been, he, 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 he was all right. I, again, I, I didn't really get to spend much time with him because I was out of know come back for pre-season, and, and that was kind that was kind of it. But yeah, he was another one, kind of, the, the basics were, were very important to him, work hard, um, 
give you all for the team and uh, and he, he was in a bit of a transition we were signing a lot of players we were bringing a lot of players in a lot of players were going out, out of contract so I'm sure his head was probably all over the gap I mean last thing is concerned was probably me do you know what I mean so I understood the decision I wanted to stay there longer I felt like I could have played in the first team up about now and give it a good good shot but that, that's life and unfortunately you had to move on Right, mate, you sign permanently with Leicester and you play under the hornest man in the world, manager in the world, Sven Gordon Erickson. Yeah. <laughs> he's a man. He, yeah, he's a very, very good guy, very, very dry in his humour. Um, loved it, loved the bet being footy, five pound goals and all this, five pound games and all this. But Did he? Yeah, he, like every game, every five side in the game was for five pound. And if your team, your team won, you had to get five pound from every player. I just love competition again. But completely different to to who I worked in there. Very, um, very relaxed, very laid back. Um, and again, we were less less to that that time. We were we were just being taken over by the new owners, um, sadly from the from the late owner of the club. And we were in a real transition of bringing in a lot of players, a lot of loans. Um, so I kind of I find I fell down the pecking order quite quick, which. Looking back now, I probably didn't help myself. I was young. I wanted to play. I, I probably fell out of favour with a lot of managers because of my attitude. But I just what wanted to play. What would you do? Would you go and see them? So I used to go and say, well, I, want, I want to play. If I'm not playing, I want to go. And he's like, no, don't be, don't be like that. Like, Respect. Yeah, then would say, don't be like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy it's, to speak to him. Like, I, I, got on, I got on really well with him. Um, and he was just, he was just dead open. He was like, "Okay, if you want to go, I'll let you go. If you want to go on loan, you want to go on loan." I was like, "Yeah, I'll go on loan. I'll go play. I want to play games. Like that's, that's the way I've been brought up. I'm not going to sit around and be third, fourth choice striker. I want, to, I want to play. I want to show you how good I am." He was like, "Yeah, yeah, no problem. That's fine. I'll let you go. That's, that's no worries." <laughs> and that, that was kind, that was kind of how he was. Just really laid back, and I appreciated it because I know a lot of managers might be like, "No, no, we've only got four strikers. I need you around." But He's like, no, if you, if you want to go and play, I totally get that. That's fine. So, would Sven ever, would Sven ever go out with the boys? Sorry? Would he ever go out with the boys? Nah, I, I remember going, we went to Sweden. We went to Sweden pre-season, the, the year he came. And we'd never seen him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he, he, he turned up for 10.30 for training, back off again at one, and that, that was it. It was, <laughs> it was just a jolly up. We might as well just went on a five-day bender. <laughs> oh, I love that, man. Yeah. Uh, like, see, was he that nice that, like, I can't even imagine Sven Gordon Erickson getting angry. Does he get angry? No, nah, no, nah, if, if, if you got angry, it, 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 it would be Because like, his tender was broke. <laughs> he probably, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, honestly, I, I can't remember him getting angry. And if he got angry, he'd probably just laugh it off and just, like, walk away. Like, he, he was just so laid back. He, and for, like, the person that he was, when we first tried to come in, everyone was like, oh, Sven Gordon Erickson, like, we're a bit nervous yet. Yeah. But really, really approachable, really dead easy to speak to. And he, again, you like he, he liked me who I was as a, as a footballer and a player, but I just didn't kind of fit into the players we brought in, like Yakubu, Jermaine Beckford, um, Kamara came in. So we had well established players, and I just kind of fell down the, the picking order again. So See, see because he was so laid back, would the boys take the piss and just go out of the town? No, no, because he, he had like his guidelines. He, he he gave you a bit of leeway, but the boys kind of respected that, and it kind it kind of worked well. Don't get us wrong; we didn't have the most successful time under him, but a lot of changes, whatever. But we didn't really take them out that much. You know what I mean? It was just one of them things. Mm-hmm. I think because he gave you the opportunity, like well, the boys like, oh, well, I don't really need to go. Out. Whereas some managers, no, 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 you're not doing this, not doing that. Boys, instantly go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man, I'm going out. If, not, if you're going to tell us not to, I am going out, so he's all right. Right, mate, I love players that have played for Millwall. I've played it in the den, mate. It's scary, man. I don't care what it is. Right. The thing with Millwall was, mate, see, when I went to Swindon, like, I thought it would be like 16, 17-year-old kids waiting for you getting off the bus. Mate, it's yeah. like 45-year-old guys actually it's, want to kill mate, me. It's, it's mental, isn't it? It's oh, my the God. It's bizarre place I've ever played for one. one Any percent. examples of that, man? I remember going there on my debut and getting booed on my debut by the home fans. That's how that's how that's how <laughs> intense it was. So I came on, I came on as a sub, and uh, funny enough, it was actually against Derby. We got beat. I think it was like five one. I, I scored right. So I came on. We're losing three 0 I come on, I score, 
Then I, then they go score again. I think I miss a chance. Keep I saves it and goes up for a corner. I go over and over and take the corner. Why I'm calling you this? You do that. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Is that the Derby fans? It's but it's our fans. Give them the script. I'm thinking. Jeez, like, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get a break here. <laughs> but it's honestly like I remember one game. I couldn't play. I was in, in, ineligible, and I'm sitting in the fan in the st- stands with me, my mom and. Me, me, missus, and me little boy at the time, and the just the stuff that you hear in the fans was just unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> but not, not but unable to repeat. <laughs> We've had boys on here that says like if it's a bad result, but like the weight for you in the like outside the ground. Isn't it? the, the, honestly, it, it, it's like it's like it's Green Street. That's what they wait for you. Like they wait for you the flat caps, Stone Islands up here. I'm sure, I'm sure they've got something in the pocket this way and just pull out if you, if you see after them. So you just you just gotta wait for a spe- clear spot on the bus and just make a peg for it. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't pull out the tunnel. That's amazing, man. Uh, and then you went to Wigan, mate, where you ended up permanently. Um, yeah. What what? So Wigan, big club now. Yeah, I, I enjoyed my time there. So basically, I, I had a short spell at West uh, Millwall. That the manager left, I went back, and then I heard Wigan came in. That the, the manager Ruby Rosler. Um, I've heard he's a bit different as well, Rosler, is he? he? Uh, he he's, he's another one. I, honestly, I, I don't know how I've survived in football. I've played in the sun, cock as. Um, he, he's one of these. <laughs> he's, um, we used to do shape, right? He used to have this ball in, under his arm. He used to have a ball. He used to like, sprint to a position. So like you were like, like, shuffling shape and that. And he's sprinting in the lines are like looking around at each other and you'd ask like random people questions and obviously the people didn't have a clue what the lads didn't have a clue what was going on so they just have to say random stuff and he was just he, he, he was just some kind of like, most animated guy I've met in football up and down touch lines the demands I just remember one pre-season we went on the, a rec- we played a game we went on a recovery bike ride I turned into about a 30k sprint <laughs> I think we got beat so we're like we we're, we're pedaled out X amount of distance, right? And we got the the turn of pride. He goes, "Do you think that's good enough?" And all the lads, the lads are having like ice lollies and, and sweets at the back. And we're going, "Not not good enough, not good enough." Fizzy pop, crisp. No, no, no. He's like, "I want you to sprint back." So we're on these bikes. We're honestly recovery day. We're done for. One of the lads didn't know how to change gears on his bike. <laughs> he's going uphill like he's almost going backwards. He's going that slow. He must be thinking, what on earth have I got here? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, used, I played against him when he was at Brentford. And we, yeah. at Brentford, the, the changing rooms are right across each other. No, Mate, no, right, 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 time, We just used to sit and listen to him going absolutely mental at Mate, Brentford players, man. No, he'd not changed. He'd not changed. He, he, was, he was an absolute character. Did you ever get it off him? Did he ever slaughter you? Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, once we played um, we played Burton in the cup and um we got we got beat. They were obviously in League One and we were we were in the championship and we got beat. And he goes, Waggy, what was that? And he goes, Oh listen, like I, I was crap, yeah, I apologise, lad, sorry. He goes, No, like unacceptable. You're coming in your fancy cars and your Maseratis, no, 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 not for me, not for me. And he's in his pop man just digging it out and he just goes on this big rant. And he goes on to one of the other lads, and one of the other lads just get, had a crop day at the back, and he starts going, You need to go home and cry to your mama and all. <laughs> and listen, like, he, 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 did, he didn't know about when he dug people out. And that's probably the only time that I've been individually just kind of dug out in a, in a dressing room. It made us feel about looking this big. It, it was tough. Did you have a Maserati? I did have one, I, I did. Oh, amazing. Why not? It was crap. It was rubbish. Rubbish car. Uh, mate, I watched him. He was on. Uh, he was on against Bayern. Was it Borussia Dortmund the other day? Did you see him at the end with the last? He started cuddling his coach. That's kind of. Do you know what it was? He was. He was if his team, he's, he's one of them. If his team played well, outrun the opposition in the loss, he'd be like, "I can't even know that much about that." Sometimes he's just got better players. But he's one of these. If you didn't, if you didn't run around, he, he would absolutely batter you. Mm. He's, what he's was the standard battle boys during the game yeah yeah you, you, pop a, you drag people off after 20-30 minutes not an issue not a problem off you come that's you done and you, 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 you I see boys in the championship do they not crack up, up when uh, after 20 minutes 
So, some lads do. It just depends if you're willing to like t- take the fight, really. <laughs> if you're willing to, if you're willing to have a stop in the gaffer. But he was nuts. Yeah, he would probably knock you out for them. <laughs> Amazing man. Also <laughs> putting that to Malky Mackay and Gary Caldwell, yeah. the Scottish guys. Uh, how yeah. are they? Like? Um, under Malky, I kind of got my chance to, to play. We, we were going through a bit of a period again. He came in, but I, I just got injured when he came in. I'd I done me, uh, I'd done the AC joint my shoulder, so I had to have an operation. I, I was out for a while. Yeah, um, I didn't have that wish at that point. I missed about three months rehab. Came back, played a few games under him, and come back in done done all right. But we were we were really struggling that year. We were phony. We were losing games. We were, had a lot of loans again. Um, and we were down, scrapping down the bottom of the league, and it wasn't wasn't ideal. Um, he then got sacked, and, and guys came in, and he was kind of left in a situation where he's got to pick up the pieces from from the year. Do you know what I mean? He was, he was struggling. We were down. The, we were almost relegated when he came in, and the last few games we we, we got relegated. Unfortunately, it was, it was a tough year, physically and mentally, because. We weren't winning games. It wasn't nice. Change of manager in and out of the team, injuries, and um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't ideal. This is off script, mate. But just going on like the managers now, you played for some crazy ones. What about players wise? Like who who's been the the funniest kind of managers player that you played up until that before you went to Rangers? Uh, <laughs> um, the maddest player I've probably played with. Saul Bamba was funny. He, he was he was a good laugh. So at Leicester, I was with him at Leicester. James McCarthy. Um, Wigan, he was a he's a crackpot. James McLean, obviously speaks for himself. He's a crack guys. James he just <laughs> um there's him and Carl Mack together. They were like two peas in the pod, dumb and dumber. Got them on the training pitch were, were priceless. Just at each other all the time. James he could just smash anybody at any point for no reason. Um I try I'm trying to think of also I've kind of played this. Well, sorry, who you said me? I was going to say, at Melbourne, we had um, Big Danny Shitu, who would take no prisoners, and uh, Stevie Morrison up front. But then we're like proper characters, John me and proper Melbourne boys, yeah. Alan, Alan Dunn, the right back, Forney, the goal. Oh, I played against them, mate. They are actual scary guys, man. Dunny and Forney, I remember we, we were playing back right away. This is, this is my last long game, and I'm, and I'm sitting there. This is at Melbourne, sorry, yeah. This is, this is at Melbourne, yeah, sorry, last game, last game before I leave. And we get beaten no again, you know, it's like everyone starts kicking off. And I remember like you would park forty sitting one eye side, you got like the, the skips in the middle, like with all the treatment stuff on. You just launched I can't even remember who you fighting with, you just launched across the skips and then just like a mass ten player brawl in the middle of the skip. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh god, and that's kind of how Mill War was as a as a team and there's a club, it just kind of epitomized how how that club was. So then then what them were proper crack as them not. Was it with Saul Bamba where uh, Sven? Yeah, it's all this is Sven. Saul, Saul Bamba. <laughs> and what you just quite vocal in the dressing room in that big band? He, he was just the, the happiest guy ever. No, no matter what the situation, always had a smile on his face. He just he just loved it and what what a nice guy he is now. I still speak to him every now and then. He's he's a proper proper good guy he is. Hey, good on Sky Sports, man. I feel like him. Is, uh, nice. Right, Rangers. Uh, what yeah. was it actually heard the Rangers interest? So when I, first, when I first heard of it, um, it, was, it was my agent, he, was, he knew Mark Warburton from, like kind of looking after him from previous deals, whatever, and I knew Mark Warburton through his son Jack, who I used to play with at Leicester, so there's always kind of an, a connection there, and he used to come and watch a few of the games, the Resi game, blah, 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 and when they kind of showed an interest, obviously I was like, yeah, I'm, I don't get us wrong, as that wing at the time, we just got relegated, I didn't want to be go to League One because if you get stuck in there I knew it was going to be difficult obviously they went on to get promoted again so that was never really an issue but I just kind of wanted to kind of get away from that bad spell that I was in I had a lot of injuries I was going through a tough time and we just got relegated so I just kind of thought fresh change and then when I heard if Rangers been interested it kind of speaks for itself do you know what I mean you, you know the history of the club you know the the players that I played for the the trophies that they've won, what they've been through, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the club, um, and I knew because I've got family and friends who, who support the team and support the club. So when I spoke to them, it was it was a no brainer. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was family like, in Thunderland, they supported Rangers. Yeah, I've got I've got loads. I've got loads of family that used to go and watch, you know, watch the games. Friends, 
like family, friends of family who used to go and support. Obviously, to Rangers fans are everywhere, aren't they? So you can you can never have too far from from meeting a fan. So I used to speak. I used to speak to everyone. Then when I see, used to speak to friends about going up there, it was there was a no brainer going to play in front of fifty five thousand and having the opportunity to go and to win games and win trophies was was unbelievable. I was going to say, mate, you can't drive a Maserati and they're going to England, man. You need to play down for a course or something. I, I, I did, mate. Fiat 500, I think I went there. <laughs> uh, did you know much about like, the, the troubles that Rangers had been in? Did that, that no bother you? Was there a wee worry there? I, 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 at the time, obviously, you, you, you hear about it on the news, you learn about it, you see it. And I didn't really kind of grasp the situation that we're in. Um, until you go up there and you kind of... You see the history. I I I I try to I try to learn as much as I could about it. I used to read up on the history, what they went through, what they've been through, and I kind of felt it was an opportunity to get the club back the way it needed to be. And I spoke to the manager. Um, I remember driving from Newcastle to to Scotland to go and meet them, just because I was kind of that desperate to kind of go and play there and, and, and get the get the deal done. Do you know what I mean? I was I was hungry to go. And, play for the club and um, I think that kind of helped getting used to the area I drove around and go and see the stadium when someone up there I was like yeah to me I need to get this done I need to go so Where did you meet Mark Warburton? I like stories like this where did you meet him? Did you go for food? Met, met him in the hotel in, in Scotland and um, what's that one on um, Joe by I'm trying to think I'm trying to think I'll explain it's, it's you know just Maybe you're in. Maybe you're in. <laughs> it, would, it would, probably would have been back then, but no, I try to think, you know. Is that the West End? Yeah, Joe, you come through the West End before you go down there. What's the, 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 Byers Road. Byers Road, yeah. The, 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 posh, the posh one on the corner. I forgot yeah. what it's called there. Uh, so the yeah, I met, I met him and David. We are there and um, I had a chat with him and had a, co- a coffee with him and kind of explained how they were going to go and play football and how they were going to do it, how they were restructuring the club. Rob Keane had just signed from, from Wigan, who we knew. Um, Tavernier was there, wasn't he? Tavernier was going at the same time. Yeah, the main to have signed at the same time and kept just kind of how he, he, he came across and how he's going to play football and how he was going to play. It was it was a no-brainer. I wanted to get up there and I wanted to play games and, and, try, and try and get promoted and, and win trophies. See, uh, he, we found him on here, Matt Ward, but he is quite impressive when you when you speak to him, isn't he? He speaks very well. He's he's very knowledgeable. He knows a lot about the game. He knows he's got a style of playing, a way of playing, and that's kind of how I wanted to to take my next my next part of my career to develop myself as a footballer. He he, took, he coached us again and taught us new stuff about the play in and out of possession, which kind of sold it for me, and, and I was excited to to take on that new challenge, especially playing in front of fans who demand nothing but the best. See, obviously you'd been at a big club in Sunderland, but like, how impressed were you like Ibrox and like, when you first walk out at Ibrox? Oh, it, it, it's incredible. You walk in, you see the staircase, you see the history, the legends board, the trophy room, and you, you, you can't help but be, but fall in love with the place. Like, it's, it's, it's instant. It's, it's some, some place and you just think, oh, if I, if I, if I, do well, yeah. If we, if we do well as a team, yeah, you, you can't help but think of the rewards that come with playing for a club like Rangers, the chances of winning trophies. That's kind of what you go to the club for. The history, the the place that it's been, and where you thought you could you could take the club again. It was it was exciting, and it was it was desperate to be part of it. What was Lord Burton's like final end goal for you at being at Rangers? Was it to eventually win the Premier League? That was. That was the goal. First yeah. and foremost, get promoted, um, get ourselves back into a position of challenging again. And then, ultimately, that was, as soon as he got back to the Premier League, that was Rangers' only one target, win the league, beat Celtic. When that was pretty clear to everyone, as soon as he walked through the door, beat Celtic, win the league, beat Celtic, win the league. And that's kind of where, where Rangers fans, Rangers players knew what that would do, win every game and, and, and win the league. See, just on one button, like, as I say, he's impressive, but he's quite serious, isn't he? Could you still get a laugh from him as well? Would you have a laugh in it? Um, not, not, not so much a laugh, no. You, yeah. was, he was, I think if you, you had a bit of banter, it was, it was very, like, dry banter. It wasn't, like, take the piss banter, if that makes sense. I mean, it was just quite jokey, jokey, laughy, laughy. And it was, that's kind of where it went. Whereas David Weir, he, he'd had all the, 
all the history and all the knowledge of the club, you can have a bit of banter with Davy and tell you some stories and stuff like that, which was, which is for us coming from England, not knowing the place, it was good to kind of know a bit about the club and, and find stuff out, which was, which was nice. Uh, I want to ask you, number 33, why, why that? Uh, 33 was, it was, it was a weird, weird time. So I just signed for, for Wigan, I got 33. Uh, I bought a, bought a house in, in Sunderland, where I was from, door number 33, the postcode was 33. Door just like, it was one of them times I got like a, a birthday gift off me missus, it was a private plate that had 33 in it. And it just all happened in the space of like two, three months. So that kind of where that number came from, to be honest. Andy Halliday said that he, they would pull guys aside one to one, one and have a proper chat with them. Did you ever get that, Fairly and Kenny? Yeah, I, I, I had it a lot of times, to be honest. I, I, I was never one for kind of falling the back not opinions, but like I would always try and speak to the manager and learn what I was doing. Because I was going there, I wanted to, I wanted to do well and I wanted to play and see how I fit in. So, they were, they were, David, David yeah, was, was good like that. He'd always kind of put it aside and talk you through games coming up, stadiums, where you're going, how you're playing, fans, what, what's going on with them and like try and keep you not focused on what's going around you because you, you know what guys goes like it's a it's a bubble in it, it's a goldfish ball. You just try and keep you focusing on doing what you've got to do for the team and, and focus on that really. So they both they both work really well. Obviously D- David's knowledge of, of guys going and, and Rangers whereas the manager was was very technical and all about how to progress as a footballer. Yeah, because you you've obviously played for a big rivalry with Sunderland and Newcastle, but I say like in Rangers completely different even to that. Yeah, it's massive. It's absolutely. When I, I didn't realize like, how bad that intensity was. Was it when you were walking about the street? No, I, I, I didn't realize. Obviously, you, you know of it. You see, you see, you see games on the TV. Well, I, yeah, I watch games on the TV, and you see the the rivalry. And I remember our first meeting. It obviously been it'd been a while since Rangers have played because the lower leagues, the competitions, they weren't they weren't quite facing each other as much as they could. And unfortunately, I was I was injured for that game. But I remember watching that. I'm thinking. This is unbelievable. It's what it's the best atmosphere I've ever been in, hands down in the stadium, one hundred percent. It was incredible. The the passion, the hatred. It's just, it, it's pure hatred for each other, isn't it? And from the match day, mm-hmm. it was it, it was so intense. It was it was incredible. Did you enjoy that? Loved it. Absolutely loved it. It was it, it's hard to describe. So, so you play a match sometimes and you can you, you walk out of the stadium, you, you feel the buzz of the crowd, but that that was just like a, a, it's just a just a noise in your head. It was just so loud. It was you couldn't on on all film days. You couldn't hear each other. One hundred percent. You'd have to just try and guess what somebody's telling you. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's probably a good thing though. You couldn't hear Josh Windass is shy. Oh, you know, tune your yarn off talking about how good he is or how good he is. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, right, mate. You got off to a great start. Though. Two goals in a six-two win over Hibs Challenge Cup. Yeah. Uh, did you take the pressure off straight away? Um. Uh, obviously, it was a great start. I think everyone kind of was buzzing that we we got told Hibs first game of the season we need to lay a marker down. Yeah, they're gonna they, they, they'd come close the season before. They were a good side, and um, they got some good players. We need to lay a marker down. Yeah, and the way we started, I think they weren't ready for how we were as a team. We we'll, we'll pressed them. We we'll, we'll played them off the park. We we we'll, we we'll considered an early goal, and um, which didn't help. But the way. The way we played was was a joke, and I, I remember thinking like, we've we've got a good chance. If this is our our competition this year, then if we can keep up this level of standard and keep playing like this, then we'll, we'll do all right. You know what I mean? So to get off on the front foot with two goals for me, especially at a club like Rangers as a straight guy, you judged on you judged on goals, and for me that was the ideal start. Do you feel the outside looking in that year? It always seemed like it was a bit of needle between you and Hibs. Was it, was yeah, it... there was. Yeah, I think that was kind of the, the the main rivalry, wasn't it, between between the league? Obviously, I I don't know what it was. Obviously, the year before, apparently, the, a lot of stuff had kicked off in in, in a final or, or a cup or something, and I, this that kind of boiled over to this year. And don't get us wrong, I I, I love beating them to, at their place as well. First game of the season for me, it was it was nice. I, I enjoyed it. And so that year is a flying mate. Like, how good is it being a Rangers player at that time when everything's going well? You're, you're treated like a king yeah. in Glasgow, aren't you? Yeah, no, it, it was brilliant. Um, loved it, playing games, winning games. And so I, I, I loved, I loved how a win wasn't good enough. Like it, it could always be three 0 If it wasn't three 0 it should have been four 0 If it wasn't four 0 it was five 0 And at the time, winning games, I'm thinking, yeah, you're right. Like, it brought me up to. 
demand more of myself. Do you know what I mean? I was thinking, yeah, I should have got two there. I should have got a hat trick there. I should have. And I was disappointed to come off the game. And I think ultimately, like being that like, disappointed that often not scoring more or not winning by more kind of had a negative effect. And as it started having an adverse effect to come off being we're winning games and we're scoring goals. And I was kind of being influenced by wanting more, probably being a bit too greedy, wanting much, much more. And I probably should have been happy and satisfied with what I was doing and, being, and contributing towards the team because I started scrutinising everything. I started thinking over, thinking too much and worrying about too much and going on the game thinking, right, get one, get two, get two, get three, get three. And as a striker, you do need to be selfish, you do need to be hungry, but I started probably to overcomplicate things when I should have just kept doing what I was doing. Why do you think that was? Just because of the size of the, like, the crowd? And I th- the- yeah, I, th- I think it's just the demand of the club, wasn't it? The club, just the, you just want the need to win games and you have to win every game. And, and, and I'm, I love that pressure. I love wanting the fact that I need to win, yeah, I need to win, I need to score a, a strike, I need to score goals, yeah, I need to do this, I need to do that. And I think you can start talking yourself into something that you don't really need to do. And... Is that the first time you've done that in your career, Matt? Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think I, I, yeah, definitely, because other clubs, don't get us wrong, other clubs I've been at weren't winning games as easily and as freely as what I was at Rangers. And as a striker, I'm sort of thinking, yeah, I've got, I've, I've got an opportunity to score, bag, bag from the goals, win this, win that, win this, win this. And it probably, should, probably got my eye off the ball of what I really need to focus on and just do my job for the team. If I score, great. If not, then as long as the team wins, that's the most important thing. And I just kind of maybe got wrapped up in a bit of I had to score goals here. And it probably had an adverse, like I say, I had, had an adverse effect on us. Could Mark Warburton sense that in you? Like, would he, would he see um, yeah, he, 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 we, we that? Yeah, we always used to talk like, he used, used to think like, I'm getting in front of the goal now, I'm starting to overthink things, or I'm trying to do too much, or I, he always try to make a simplify my game and try to just be free and just play the game the way, I, the way he signed us and it was probably like you say probably just me wanting to because I scored quite a few goals up until my injury and I just always I had targets of like get to the next set get the, get to the next five get the next five get the next ten and probably just started getting probably too carried away with how well as a team we were doing as in, in, individually that's the thing about playing for like a set of kind of Rangers. It's it's not just going out and playing on the pitch in your body, mate. It's total mentally as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Sorry, on you go, mate. It's just it's just coping with. It's as hard as as much as you try and not let outside influence affect you. It's hard not doing when you got fifty five thousand fans week in week out, expecting nothing but the win and then and demanding the very best, and then you go you go out and the the day what happened. What happened the other day? You should have had five. You should have scored six. You should have scored seven. The team should have won eight. And that's kind of what I think got into my head, thinking, yeah, I probably should have got a couple of more last year. And then I started going looking over my chances and being like, yeah, I should have done this. I should have done this next time. And then you come into a game situation, you're probably thinking, right, last time I done this, I should start. And you start basically start overcomplicating everything, and it's, and it's tough to try to get out of that when you're you're expecting certain demands of yourself. How often would that happen? People come up to you in the street when you're living in Glasgow. <laughs> every day, every other day. And I had a first one as well. It was it was lovely to go from a struggle that I had the year before to being in the city where it's football, football, football. Rangers doing well, brilliant. Loved it. It was class, and it gave us. I think for 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 myself, it gave me a boost knowing that the fans were supportive and wanted us to do well going and going into match days. Would you ever go like, oh, come on, mate, I'm flying here, man. Just give us two minutes. Give us peace for two seconds, man. It's, it's hard not to because the normally in groups of five and six, so if one's, one's finished, they're the ones having to go at you from all, from all, from all different angles. And he might have been kind of deep, but the three behind you might be calling you all sorts. I mean, it was difficult. It was, it was yeah. tough at times. It's crazy. Uh, that first uh, first season, good squad. How was the morale in the dressing room? Who were, who were the good lads? Joe, you know we, 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 we were a very good group. Um, we made a lot of signings. We obviously brought in Wes. Andy came in. Young little Holtley came in. Andy, myself, Tav, Rob, um, Harry Forrester came in. So a lot of the English core came in, and I think we, we, we bonded really well because you had likes of Kenny, Waldo, a lot of history there. Nicky Clark, Dean Shields, Nicky Norm. They'd all been there. They'd done that. They knew, they knew the club. 
and we'd, we'd, all, we'd all got on really well. It was, it was a really good, really good group of lads. And for, I think winning games obviously does help. And we're, we all clicked. We're, we're, we're never a set 11. I think that's kind of what the Wolverton kind of told people. Like you would rotate the team in and out or play wide. Can you play wide? Players were always versatile in the mix. So it was never like a, a set 11 and other boys would jump in and out. You, 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 you rotated and mixed the team up quite a lot, which kind of kept people on the toes. Was a lot of joking in that dressing room or was, was it just quite chilled? No, and, 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 and the holiday it was, it was, it was a good laugh. Um, believe not, Waldo, Waldo was funny. Yeah, that was a good laugh, mate. I remember him as a young boy. He was funny. I, 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 came, I came in and I, I, I remember beating him in the in the dress room. I'm thinking, does he does he like me or like has he got a problem with me? Yeah, because there was space. You just said, "Well, I'm thinking, oh god, like is it's it's going to be quite tough for them." But he was a great crack. He, he was a good laugh on the night. He, he was good fun and. He had the likes of Kenny. Kenny was always up for a laugh, always, always bantering people. Um, I think because Kenny had been there, he'd been through the lot, he, he knew everything about it. But obviously the, the main man, Jimmy Bell, was, was the life and soul of everything. How, how, uh, are any examples like how Jimmy Bell, any funny things that he's done said to people? Uh, I, I, remember, I remember going to Jimmy Bell when I first signed. I was like, Jimmy, can I have, can I have number 33, please? He's like, nah, somebody's got it. I was like, who's got it? He's like, oh, well, they can't make it. I was like, well... I appreciate, like, I, I get that, but can you stop it? Like, it's like, no, nah, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. I, was, like, I had to, like, I had to work on him for, like, about five days. Like, Jimmy, can I get him? Is it that? And I can't, he's like, what, 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 trying to get back? I can't it. It was just, like, it was just a constant battle with how stubborn he was, but he, he was class, man. He, I just, I loved his room, his, his, his kit room, and the history, the the people, he had boots galore on and pictures, like, um, the, the bandits, the, the pendants, whatever, like, shirts. It was just riddled with history, and it was class to to see to see that he kept it, and he'd been through he'd been through the lot. It was it was incredible. I, I mean, me and Tav used to sit in there for ages when the first one, just listening to him talk about where he'd been, what he'd done, what he had experienced, and and what it was like to be to be a ranger. Do you know what I mean? And what you can achieve if you if you've got something good. It was it was class, man. With the hammer boys, <laughs> he hammered everyone. Really? If, if you if you weren't happy with one little bit about your kit, he would cane you, and you he would not forget it for the rest of the season. So I remember like I, I had a thing with my like, socks, and every match day you would go if you complained about your socks, I'm not giving them at all. And just every every little thing, match tops. If you if you weren't happy with your match top, you're not getting one. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Why I'm not doing it? <laughs> it was that it was just a constant battle. But you, do you want know, like you? He was just such such a good, a good guy, dry sense of humour, and, and again, if if he didn't like it, you, you tell you, and and I, I got on really well with him. I, I, I loved spending hours in that kit room with him. It was class. No, I need to ask you actually. I spoke to Wes as you've just mentioned them. I need to ask you about the beef Christmas do story. Oh. <laughs> right, so we we go we go Newcastle and like that, right? And the, you, there's this like teppanyaki plate where they chop up like the food in front of your cook or whatever. And um, so basically, I, I, I'm sat one side, beef sat, the, uh, beef sat the other side, boys are sat the other side. And somebody's launched a bit of beef off his head. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sat there, I've got my, I've got my bottle of beer, I'm, I'm wet pissing myself, mate. Like, I'm like a hysterics. And Wes, Wes like starts to come over to confront us, he goes, why do you want to laugh? And I goes, yeah. <laughs> Somebody just slapped a bit of beef up your head, like it's the funniest thing ever. And he goes, Nah, it's not funny, but so like, you start on us. So then I'm going over there, I was like, Where's you can't be serious? I'll, I'll smash this bottle of beef up the head, mate. Like, stop, stop, like, stop taking the piss. It's like, Nah, who's in the beef? Who's in the beef? <laughs> He's storming around this restaurant, mate, wondering who's in the beef. And to this day, we still don't know who's throwing that beef up his head. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I think it's Nicky Clark. Nicky Clark. Dropped his pants and, and shot off. I don't know where he went, but man, honestly, the slap on the, this beef on his forehead—it was like stuck right in his head, mate. It was oh man, it was, it was so funny. It was just one of them ones there, like where the boys had too much to drink. Um, I'm creasing because just the, the sound of it was man, it was so funny. It's just one of them moments where. The timing of it was was priceless. It was class. <laughs> Would you go a lot together, Maggie? 
Oh, yeah, we should go quite a bit. Obviously, you score 29 in Glasgow, we should go there quite a bit. Who did you? Everyone, mate. It was, it, was a good, it was a proper good group. I mean, even if Mads went out and went back early or whatever, everyone would make the effort for each other. Like, it, it was a proper good, proper good group of lads and we all, we all got on great and it, it was good fun, mate. It was good fun. Right, mate, you were doing really well and then you picked up an injury in February. Uh, yeah. How good uh, how got and was that to miss a run and the Celtic game? <laughs> yeah, because we... we we're doing well in the cup. Obviously, I wanted to be part of that. I got injured in the in the in the, the second leg of that. Um, yeah, it was, it was really disappointing because I, I just got back playing and I thought oh, not another long term injury from from when I did my shoulder. It was, it was the last thing I wanted. So to miss two or three months and then we won games. We got through the next round. We beat Dundee in the next round. I'm thinking the semi the semi's coming up here. Like I, I need to get fit for this. So that was always my target. I need to get fit for the series. Need to get fit for the semis. And looking back, obviously now I was probably just like a couple of weeks away from it. Um, but it was it was very difficult at that time because the lads were, were still winning games. They got the the Pepper Track final, they won that. I missed that final. I missed the semi final result against Celtic. And that's kind of what I was I was there to do. I was there to play finals. I was there to play against Celtic. And to miss those two was really it was really disappointing because I felt like I'd kind of built up a. A good bit of form in the season, scoring goals, playing well, the team was doing well, and they missed two big games. That that was was, was disappointing. See, uh, see, when you beat Dundee in that the round before, Celtic, was there talk in the dressing room? We want to get Celtic. Yeah, we, that's that's all we wanted to do. We wanted to play Celtic, whether it was this, the semis or the final. We knew we were going to have to play them at some point. So, and then then on our on our heads, we're thinking if we get in the semis and we, we, we put on a result, then win the final, then we've got we've got half a chance. Do you know what I mean? And I think looking back now, that's probably kind of affected when in the long run why we maybe let slip with the final. Obviously, it's a disappointing day. I uh, got back for that, and to let that slip the way we did in the, in the last ten minutes was was really disappointing because we'd done all the hard work essentially, and to, to get beat off him, so we'd kind of battered all season to to lose a, a lose on them in the final was really really disappointing. Do you remember where you were when the draw was made and Celtic and Rangers was pulled up? Yeah, we were, we were all at the training ground together. And we were we were in the meeting room waiting for it to be drawn. And I was thinking, please be Celtic. Please. Everyone everyone wanted Celtic. Everyone wanted it, regardless of the draw. Just well, get to get it over and done with. And yeah, we got it. We were, we were all buzzing. It was oh, a good like, day. Or oh, Yeah, we all jumped on like pop up on like. What, what, do you want to say like you know, league teams and the thing now when they draw a big team, the, the the FA Cup? That's kind of like like was like. Right, we've got a right good opportunity. Yeah, we're, we're playing well this season. We knew that we knew they were winning games, but they were struggling. They were under that body down there, and they yeah. weren't playing. They weren't playing the best of the stuff. They were obviously still winning games, and we're, we're in the league. But we knew we had a we had a good opportunity to to face them at the time that they were they were in, and we thought, yeah, let's let's go. Obviously, I was celebrating, but I was thinking, oh, typical, we we'll play Celtic now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna miss it, but. See, you're watching from the outside, so see the week build up to that game. Is it? Is it like yeah. the one you've ever seen? It may. It's mental. Obviously, that was the first time we played them that year. Just the the press start following you everywhere. The outside the gate at at, the, at Murray Park at the training ground. Um, there, there, there was just like a, a level of intensity. Stories not coming out the paper that weren't even true. Uh, stuff gets made up. Stuff gets starts getting sent to your house. Like what gets sent to us? Not not my house, but like I know ex players and players, and I remember speaking there. I got quite close with Peter Lover. We are still quite close with Peter Lover and stuff. And I remember him sent got sent bullets to his house and stuff like that. And wow. it was just like a level of intensity in the, the press. I think the press built it up something something mad, don't they? And when the games come down, it's just like this massive cauldron. Everyone's ready, ready to kill each other, basically. Uh, where did you watch your penalties? Were you on the pitch? I was, on the, I was on the side eye. I was on the yeah, side. Aaron and Degatha. I, I think I was next to, big, next to Big Jim Stewart, actually. Next to Big Jim and Disco. I think I was standing oh, there. See, did you see, were you standing next to Jim Stewart? The, have you seen Wes's interview? Yeah, so I, so I, 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 I sprint straight to Wes, yeah. And Wes chucks and drops the shoulder and I go flying. I'm in my suit, I'm in my shoes. And wow. I go flying on the pitch. No, but see, before the penalties, Wes told the story that Craig Gord, because uh, Jim Stewart had written yeah. the penalties. The bottle's eye, yeah, yeah. So just, Jim, 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 Jim was class like that. He obviously he he worked with 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 Craig before, and obviously he did that for us as well. And 
Mate, I, 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 what I can only remember is just, I just remember the ball going over the bar and I'm just thinking, we've done it, like, what, what a victory that was. And I remember the staff just going absolutely crack. I do like, when that, you, just that noise just goes in the air. And, mate, it was incredible. What a day. What, what, what a was day. the dressing room like after that? Oh, chicken nuts, bottles, chopped in with, cakes, sandwiches. The lot was just was just gone, mate. I was I was starving and everything's been tossed around. <laughs> but no, I, th- I think we realised like kind of what we've built up for the whole season has paid off now. Do you know what I mean? It was we 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 done well. Did you celebrate that night? Did you go it? No, we did actually go. I think we had a game on the Tuesday. I think we were away at the bloody I don't know, somewhere up the sticks on the Tuesday, so we couldn't even go out. It was a nightmare. Uh, and then the final, mate, like, how, how desperate were you playing the final? Were you just doing everything you could to get fit for that? Yeah, so obviously I, I was badgering the physios, mate, every day, get us fit, I need to get fit, I need to get fit, I need to do this, I need to do that. And I worked, I worked really hard, like, I tried to do as much as I can, we tried, we played a couple of friendlies, yeah, I tried to get as much minutes as I could. And I, I made the final, I, I don't think I was as sharp as I was fit as I would like to have been. I think I was probably maybe another week away from where I probably I probably maybe a game off it. But we, we got ourselves in front, we, 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 were, we were doing all right. And then I remember I remember coming off about 70 minutes, I was I was done, I, 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 was, I was finished. And you just see, you see them gaining, gaining yards, they were, they were getting ball retention, they were, they were putting balls in the box and creating opportunities and, and you're thinking you're watching football and you know it's like you think they, they're going to score in a minute and they're going to score and that's kind of when it all flipped and you can just you, you, you didn't think it was just going to finish like that I thought we might have kicked on again and create another opportunity but we just we just couldn't do it So when you came off at 70 minutes were you a bit worried how the game was going huh? No, no, no like, cause we, 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 do, we do it fine but then when when the game when you're watching from the side you see it from a completely different perspective yeah. like when you're playing it you're probably just thinking oh this, they have an attack we have an attack but watching it you're probably you, you're watching it a lot more in depth and I'm thinking they, they create a few opportunities people are picking up spaces where you probably think oh there wasn't really a big thing playing it but watching it you can see you can see everything and you probably see them gaining good areas and getting balls in the box without causing, causing issues and Ultimately, it, it, it led to led to losing the game. You're the you're the only person that I've spoke to who was on the side for that final when the goal went in. Like, what was the yeah. best when that ball hit the net? Oh man, it was it was, it was good. Like, uh, it's the first time in, in, when I got relegated with Wigan, it, it it hurt. Like, but you could see see it coming. But that when when it went in, it was it was just pure. It was, it was just devastating, mate. Like the feeling of anger, disappointment, frustration. Because we're, we're done, we done the hard part. We 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 got to the final. We're playing hips were we needed to turn up, and a lot of we, a lot of we didn't turn up on the day. And it, it was frustrating because we we had a really good opportunity to cut off the year with with, with three trophies, and we, we couldn't we couldn't do it. It was really 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 disappointing, and still still hurts now how we didn't manage to win that final. He addressed the dressing room after that when you said maybe somebody's never turned up with Mark Warburton saying that, or was it just total silence? <laughs> Just total silence. Nobody, nobody really said out. I think everyone kind of knew how how crap we'd done. Really, how disappointing it had been to to let that slip. It was, it was shocking. Right, mate. The next season, uh, there was rumours that you were going to go. You and Tavernier. Uh, yeah. Did it happen, or was it just was it just rumours? No, there, there was there was there was, there was talks. I, I heard stuff about it, but. Um, it never really materialised within that. There was then there was talks of contracts and, and all this stuff that again it was all just oh there's there's a potential of a new contract, there's a potential of you leaving. It was just all kind of paper talk again and nothing really concrete concrete between club, player or interest from other clubs, do you know what I mean? So it was it was that point where we went away to we went to, went to America and it was all about right, we need to we need to Beat Celtic. We need to close the gap. We need to close the gap, and all the focus was on, on, on doing that. Um, so we, we, we went away, worked hard, come back. Was that the, the new? Is it the Bedford League or whatever? Started that new mini cup competition. We have done that, and we started off really well. I, I scored a few goals. I, I was feeling really good, and then first game of the season, where I picked up a, a hamstring injury and kind of lost a bit of confidence, a bit of form from from there on in, really. 
So, was there a new contract offered? Like, were you close to signing a new contract, Rangers? No, there wasn't necessarily a new contract offer. There was talks about if I wanted to extend my stay. I was like, well, let us just get the season going, like, get going, see how I progress, get better, and then we can go from there because I, I was happy. Like, we wanted to, I always wanted to, to play football. It wasn't really a, a big deal at the time to, to sign a new deal. I still had two years left at that point, so I just wanted to, to get going. Keep building on the goals that I scored. I was in a good place. I didn't really want to make a change or get distracted. So, and then I then obviously I got injured, and that kind of all curtailed the, the plans that were that were going to happen. Do when you're sitting in the summer and you you see the club signing like Joey Barton, Nico Grant, Jack Clint Hill, are you buzzing? Yeah. Like, you thinking? Oh yeah, it was like this, this, is, this is massive. This is kind of what the club needed. They needed winners. Joey Barton, I think, just won the the championship with Burnley. Just got promoted. Clint Hill. Same with QPR, I think, without a contract. And obviously, everybody knew of Nico Concha and the quality that he possessed was, 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 was unbelievable. So to bring them in, you're thinking, we've got the core of the team getting set up here. And it, it, it could be vital for we're going into these big games that we need these experience, the, the winning mentality that we, that we needed. Clint, how's your top man, isn't he? You heard him on. Funny what, guy. What a guy. What, what a really, really good guy. Like... Again, training day in, day out, winner, one hundred percent winner. Come off it, nice play guy, and we're doing anything for you. Got a lot of time for him. You get playing up front in training, and Clint Hill's playing defence on other team. Does he smash it? Oh, I mean, every single day we used to have tiffs all the time. Yeah, I used to hate. Well, it was one of my pet hates getting smashed in training. I couldn't stand it. I, just, I didn't say it, especially in the defender. I couldn't be big centre half comes smashing you from behind. I used to hate it. And what would you say? Just get. I used to, I used to just like just like you know it's like handbags do you know I mean stuff like that but it was just my pet hate but he just loved it he just loved smashing people. <laughs> he said that on you mate he said he just loved smashing people. Oh, it, mate. Did you think it was like did you think we could win this league but with these sort of players that we're getting in? We, we never thought we could win the league. Me personally, I didn't think we could. Right, we're winning this league easy. It's going to be too easy for you. But I thought what we've got to we've got to beat the teams around where. And then when they come to Celtic, we've got to we've got to we've got to perform. We've got to take points off them. That's how we're going to bridge the gap closer and go from there. And we we weren't good enough against the, the other teams. We we won games. We we picked up points, but we I think we're a bit complacent coming to the teams. I think we're maybe a bit a bit lax. We, we didn't really appreciate the step up of the quality from the Championship to the Premiership. And we just we just weren't we weren't at it against the other teams. And then come Celtic, it showed that we were we were miles off it in the first, the first game of the season against them. And really, really disappointing performance. That was my first game back from the injury. Um, I came on last last twenty minutes or so, and we were just we weren't at the races. We were miles off it, and that that kind of set the the, the tone for the whole season. I think. Is Martin Warburton told us that he actually regretted no sticking to his like ethos of high fast tempo players? Bringing, maybe bringing in the older players, they went away from their original identity. Would you? Would you yeah, we, 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 we did a bit because what we, uh, the whole plan for the year before was press, 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 pass, pass, pass. And we did, we did get away from that a bit. We, 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 we contained a bit, we dropped off a bit, we let teams have it and kind of, it just didn't suit him. Where maybe some players were in the, the, the mode from last year and somewhere in between it was just kind of, a bit disappointing, yeah. We're in between stars and, and, and formations that weren't, weren't really suited to us as players. Big Crank Jazz, a tremendous player, mate, but he's no pressing, he's no pressing anyway, is he? No, he, he, he wasn't a presser, was he? He wasn't a presser. No. He's, he's, he's a number 10 bit on Maradona player, but gee, mate, what, what a player. He's technically gifted, one of the most gifted players I've ever played with. Both feet, he was, he was a joy to train with at times, so it was unbelievable. You, when you were saying earlier as well about that first season, like how tight he were as a squad. Yeah, they're all similar ages, similar kind of mentalities. Yeah. Does that change as well when these type of players come in because they're big? No, they, 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 they didn't have much. Maybe, maybe Joey created a bit of um, animosity in the dressing room. But again, he just wanted to win. But he was he was a very diverse character, and like there was a difference between winning and the way maybe he went went, went around sometimes. But I kind of. I got I got on well with him. Like I, I appreciated how he wanted to win, but I think a lot of the stuff changed to suit the kind of the way would was the team then. We had like Clint, we had Joey, we had Nico in there. And we just got, like you say, we, we changed the plan and the formula that was working, and I think we kind of lost track of our identity, identity and who and who we were. 
Because see, like speaking to people, like the first year, I think what I got is like you hung on to Mark Warburton's every every word. But when these bigger yeah. people come in, maybe start questioning on then you's maybe start. Yeah, yeah. Then then we then we were kind of all just in no man's and really we're we getting told stuff. Bigger players having an opinion, they kind of question the stuff, and then we're left in the middle, of being like, well. What are we actually doing? And what's what's actually happening? And then that's kind of thing where things got lost in lost in transi- translation, unfortunately. I ask everyone this as well. When Das has said that Barton gave him a bit, and there's obviously a total story, but I enjoy. Did you ever get? Did you ever get a bit off him like proper? Uh, I I, ne- I never I never got anything off him. I think he's probably a bit scared of my physique. To be honest, so he never he never done that. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Again, like I never really got in that situation where I had any like. Beef with them, uh, beef again. Any like arguments with them or anything? Uh, we were kind of either on the same team or different positions, not, not like fighting for the same position. Whereas Josh and Andy were very competitive in that area where that uh, maybe prove a point. But I just think he was maybe over the top with how much he wanted to win a time. He maybe took it a bit too personally on the trainer pitch when it wasn't when it wasn't necessarily, but. I guess that was his character. I've I've been there at times where you probably take things a bit too far when it's it's too much. But I just think a lot of the players were just a bit miscited in terms of how we were going forward with the the plans going forward. Really, well, see when like see when Barton's cracking in that. What's the big uh, what's the big cigar smoker crank jar like? Is he just totally? Oh, and you go. Nico is just like oh, you just got just got let 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 it be, man. Just relax, just just chill out. He's the most laid back guy. Um, I, as you can imagine, as he as he comes across, but when when Nico spoke, you kind of you kind of listened because he he'd been there, he'd done that. He had he had a lot of good things to say. He helped a lot. He he played with Joe. He played with Clint. So he he kind of kind of always offered a second opinion to how they worked and how they they worked well together. He's just like you've got to understand Joey. Joey is what he is. Clint is what he is. Clint had big personality, big opinions, and the three of them all kind of had their own. Positives on the on the on the group as well, so it wasn't all just just negative, uh, neg- negative opinions. Uh, uh, there were there were big players that brought a lot of a lot of things to us that we never experienced before. So it was the, I think the big bigger stuff and the negative stuff gets highlighted more than what Dasha did bring. But that's like you say, that's I think that's the Scottish press for you. Uh, Josh Windass, just to ask, like I love him as a boy. Is he a good man? Nah, he's he's boring as boring as shit, mate. To be honest, <laughs> nah, Josh Josh is a very very strange guy. I thought he's, he's he, he, he I got I got on really well with him. Another guy who him and Crooksy came together for Macron and, and we got on really well. Um, very dynamic player. I, I like playing with him. He always made good runs. He was clever. He did, he, and again, he he, he had nine for goal, which I, I which I like. We got we got on really well. He was he was a young kid and. I've, I've not really got much else to say about him. I, I still speak to him now. We all have a good bit of talk. And at that time, we were, we were still learning a lot and developing. Well, Josh was developing. I was coming back. I mean, we were all trying to fit into this new new game plan where we were kind of all in between positions. Josh was our position at the time. I was our position. Crooksy was a bit injured at times. And we all we all got along well together because we were all in the same same mold of trying yeah. to find a way again in this new this new team. See, obviously that egg and omelette stuff, like, that be a bit that, like, could you come away with something? Yeah, that, that, that's something I'm up in a nutshell. He would, he would have, he, do, him and Kenny were great because they always had footy debates and Josh loves footy, Kenny loves footy. In breakfast time, lunch time, all of them be like, right, who's your best player? Who's your best team? Best team in the world, best player in the world, and all this. And all they would talk about was footy, footy, footy. But then when Josh had to speak about common sense or anything of, in the normal world, um, he was way off it, mate. He did have a scooby day. What was going on? I don't even think he, he knew what Dave the Beagle was at times. He's that, he was that clueless, mate. But he was, he was just football daft, football mad. Like every day, just, just loved it. Him and Ken used to have so many like arguments about who's the best player, who's the best team in the world, whatever. And they just, they just loved him, mate. Every day it was just, just constant battle about football. Right, right, mate. Top division. Um, obviously you're down south now. Uh, I know if we playing down there, people don't think it's the best up here. But what did you think of the top division in Scotland? Quite tough. Yeah, it's difficult. I, I, like, like you say, people people think, ah, oh, it's 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 Scottish Premiership. It's not really, but it's not just the, the football that you got to deal with. It's the, it's the fans around and the, the pitches, the stadiums, the, the referees, the media. Like there's a whole lot more that goes into it than than um, 
than what people think. And I think the diversity between the top leagues and the Premiership and the bottom leagues, you've got, play, you got players and teams fighting for their lives, the careers, the the continuation of the club and fighting to stay in that league. And it's, it's so competitive in terms of the at it every single week. And if you're not, you, you, you kind of got found out. You knew playing, I don't know, Wraith away or Dumbarton away. Like these, these players are fighting for, for every scrap and they want to beat Rangers, don't they? they Rangers are selling. Like, that's who they want to beat. And going to these places was, was difficult at the time. They've raised the game by 20, 30 percent because they could pull off a zone against us or, or something and then the next week they would go and lose 5 6 nil, and that mm. that for me epitomised how the mentality was of, of the, them, them type of teams they wanted to turn up for them games and then the, the rest of the week they would probably be like oh it's not as big as game as Rangers and Celtic or they might be tired or drained or whatever hold themselves back but the level of intensity for games against us they just they knew they had to raise it it's fast pace yeah. it's fast pace up here it is made, like you say, it's hundred mile an hour. You, you've got no time, no no time to breathe. Somebody's like you say, smashing you or mm-hmm. like, jumping at the bed. Yeah, I, I think kind of the way you see Andy Robertson, the way he plays now, that kind of epitomises how Scottish defenders midfielders were. It was it was high, it was high intensity pressing, smashing people, and it, it was difficult because I think we were we were given a lot more freedom and a bit more time to play the league the league below, and I think that step up kind of maybe took things a bit a bit too. Bit too easy and a bit for granted. Right, mate. See, just on the five-one defeat that you're talking about, could you yeah. believe, like, from where you had beat them in the semi-final, the feeling in the dressing room after that game, to uh, a couple of months later, to feeling that the complete opposite? Yeah, it was, it was. It was a complete contrast. I think. I think. I think that result gives Celtic a huge wake, wake up call in terms of they need the big changes. And um, they changed the manager in the summer. They brought in a lot of lot of, a lot of players and. Yeah, they raised their game and I think we we maybe underestimated how big of a game it was for cup come any game with all the, the cups anybody can win on, on any on, on any day. But I think the league game at their pace were probably just overpowered outwork and outplayed and we weren't we weren't, weren't ready for it. See for like the highs and how good it is when you're winning it and to see after like a defeat like that and maybe you're, he's in the best of form. Um, you, 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 you play at that time. Yeah, it's, it's tough, mate. It's really tough. And I think that's kind of where I, where I struggled at the, the second year in terms of mentally dealing with with, with all that because, I, like you say, I wasn't playing. I was in jail. I was in and out, and we were we weren't playing as as well as I should. And I was probably taking the criticism a bit too, a bit too personally into heart and reading into it too much and. I think that's where I kind of struggle with living within 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 Glasgow in Scotland. That, so see, what, how bad can, does it get me? Do you just go home and it's all you can think of? It? It's all, well, it's, it's, it's all that the, the city's about. It's football, 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 isn't it? Where they go. I, I used to go to the park with my little man. These fans used to shove me little boy out of the way and give us stick. We used to go to shops. You've seen the video that I, I confronted that kid and... It was just, it was just constant, mate. It was whatever I'd done. There was always somebody there, like videoing you or digging you out or having to go at you. And it, it, it got tough, mate. I, I, I struggled a lot with it, and I found it difficult to, to have. Well, I'm, a, I'm a quite family. I'm a very family oriented person. I, I struggled a lot with how they not only treat me but they treat the family. It was tough, and for the vast majority of Rangers fans, they, they were brilliant. They, they loved us, and they, they still support us to this day, which I'm, I'm grateful for. But there's always that minority and, and stuff that make it make it difficult and, and find flaws in, in your character which I found tough you know but because you went through that though, do you feel like it's helped you now and you're not oh, you're it massively it, 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 was a, it was a massive yeah it's a, it was a massive learning curve and I feel like I've lot, learned a lot about myself as a person who I am who I am as a footballer and who I am as a person and it was very difficult. It was hard to get out of it at that stage, but it's made us made us appreciate where I am and who I am now. And listen, you you, you learn from knockdowns, you learn from being the rock bottom. And I, I feel like I've done that, and I've kind of come out the other side better for it. Uh, just on one button, uh, Martin, did was there a was there a you could feel like it was it was coming to an end from Martin one button? Yeah, I, 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 we weren't we weren't playing great. We kind of lost we with style of play. We and picked up results we were going through a, a very very sticky patch and it wasn't the, for the fact that the lads had kind of given up trying we were just so in between of who we were and what we were doing 
the previous season that we kind of lost a bit of identity and lost the way we were playing. We weren't controlling games, demanding games. I think the the board kind of seen that as well. And it was it was kind of it was only um, a matter of time before a change had to be made because we weren't picking up results. How did you how did you find out that you'd left? Where were you when you found out? Um, I think we were we were actually on a day off. I was I was just at home and he, and he got I was I was on Sky Sports News actually and then. We, he, 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 I think he gave everyone in the team a message to say that he's he's, he's gone and, and and that was it really. And like you say, football it's one of them things that people come and go, don't they? Managers, I've, I've worked under enough managers to be tired there to know that these things happen and we're we're ready to move on again. When did you make a lot of the confusion surrounding his departure? Obviously, rumours yeah, that he's was speaking not. Is there any wind of that amongst the players? Yeah, there was, there was so much of that stuff because it was it wasn't just like before he, he left that that happened. It was it was in the press for a good while, wasn't it? There was talks of him yeah. speaking to the clubs and, and leaving or whatever, potentially from resigning and stuff like that. And I don't get as wrong as football as you'd be like, well, he's here. I, I don't really believe it. Um, I can't say it. I'm, I, I don't get it. Um, and. I think you just have to take them things with a pinch of salt. Obviously, looking looking back, he did go to Forest in the end, so there might have been some truth in. There's no smoke without fire, as they say, isn't there? So you never know his personal agenda. He might have been might have been distracted by by something else on the corner, and only only here, though, I guess. See, when you were saying like you were struggling a wee bit and you weren't you were in and out, would you go and see Matt Warburton button and ask why you weren't playing every week? Um, yeah, I I, I I always saw thought, saw myself as a striker, and, and I struggled to. To kind of play as a, as a winger at that time because I wasn't I wasn't the right winger I wasn't the right winger that Rangers needed I wasn't tricky I wasn't <laughs> blessed with masses of pace I wasn't built to, to defend and stuff like, I, I wasn't kind of that player yet do you know what I mean I, I was still learning as a striker and I always felt like I was I was better for the team as a, as a striker and I spoke with with the gaffer and Dave Mia about that a lot but I had. At that time, I had Kenny Miller. There was, there was um, Joe Garner as well there as well. But yeah, for no fault of my own, I was I was injured and I was in and out, so I couldn't really complain that much. But I was going to speak to him about not not playing and not playing as good as the word. And I think that's kind of where everything kind of must have overcomplicated things, thinking too much about what people said about his criticism, not scoring goals, not winning games. And that's kind of where it all kind of circulated. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like I always wonder, I see with players as well. Do you get do you get a heads up a couple of days before it's announced, or do you just find out that Pedro? No, you, see, you, see, you see stuff in the papers and in the press, and you'd be like, I, I, obviously a lot of the lads like we're never we never even heard of this guy. We we don't know who he is and stuff like that. Then he came in and he was actually watching the old firm game that we drew. We drew one one. And sure, he was. He was in the crowd, wasn't he? Uh-huh. He was in the crowd, I and he, he he came in the the following Monday and. He spoke really well. He, again, he put up a really passionate guy. Hated losing games. Wanted to win. And for us, it was a complete another change of style of play. Again, it was it was going from one chalk and cheese really going from one style to another. It was, and then it's hard when you bring in four or five members of staff trying to relay that halfway through the season. It's always difficult, isn't it? I always find that like, with foreign managers, they come in and they're tough on people straight away. Was that how? How Pedro was as well? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. He, he, he kind of had a way of playing. If he didn't fit into that, he would, he would tell you he went in and out or he weren't part of his plans. And I think that happened with a lot of the lads. So, I mean, if they found out straight, straight away whether they, they were liked or not. What, uh, did he have a one-to-one with you straight away? Did he tell you what you Yeah, he, he, he liked me. He, I, I was fortunate enough to play that. that I started that old film game, but I, I, remember, I, I always remember I missed a couple of chances. Gordon's pulled off a couple of saves. And you remember, he come up with he says, yeah, you, you missed a couple of chances, blah, blah, blah. But I, I like the way you, you work, you, your dynamic, you work well for the team. And he kind of, he, he liked it as a, as a player. He, he, he seen it as kind of a, a link-up striker, quite big. Strong, held the ball up well, and he, he told us that's how he'd probably see me play. And I, I got on all right with them. Well, uh, a couple of boys have told us about his presentations. Have you got, have you got a favourite? Oh, mate, there's, there's too many. I, I, I should remember he always used to have his, he, he always used to do some relate some stuff back, like his time back <laughs> where he was from in his hometown, and then, and then his, his assistant used to always take this, the 
the slideshows and nobody used to understand what you said. He used to, <laughs> used to say like stuff in random accents or random words and be like con- completely contradictory. So all the boys would come out from the I mean, they'd be like, what have, we, what have we actually just watched there? Like, what what relevance is that to football whatsoever? He was just like, I think he was just so caught up in the emotions of football, he would just go off on some tangent and be like some random slideshow of like a bull tackling someone for, or something like that. And like the lads were like, what on earth is that to do with football? But you just, you just, I think that's his way of trying to translate from his passion or whatever to what he did there, how he, how he was as a manager. Was it hard? Was it hard not to laugh in the in the meetings? Oh mate, the the lads are like sitting there and swearing like this, like nudging each other, and that was like, if I get caught out, he's gonna he's gonna dig us out. But mate, it was, it was it was just like after a while, you look at it, you just you end up just like looking around, like counting the tiles in the wall or something like that, just to try and get through it. it could you uh, crack as well, Pedro? Sorry, you crack. Um. He was just he was just mad. Like I I I don't really know. How to, he didn't have much crack. He was just he had this big laugh on his face, this big smile on his face. And if he if he found you funny, he probably do you know He probably wouldn't even get half the banner that we were saying. He probably came to them and he's probably laughing his head off. He just he just he was just mad, man. He just. No, I meant I meant could he crack? Like could he lose it? Oh man, he he he, he yeah, but you'd lose it in like a <laughs> in like a Mexican way. You just like start. Throwing his hands about somewhere and storming around and like speaking like, caught. I'm guessing he's calling everybody every name under the sun. Do you know what I mean in, in, his, in his language? But he would just go off and he, he would just get like this mad rage and start charging everywhere. And like, I guess that's why he's related to the bull. He probably sees himself as a bull. Do you know what I mean? You just they go and crack us. But it would, it would never be like a direct attack at the player or anyone individually. It would just be at, like mad run. Yeah, I had a coach or something, probably, probably not even us, probably his assistant would probably get it. <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just want them characters. I, I, I think he had like a, a way, and if it didn't happen, he'd just blow it later, probably himself or, or somebody else, not, not, the, not the lads. There's a few st- funny stories. It was uh, Joe Gardner's stag party, and then it was Wes was telling us about the pattern. Like, if you asked for a day off, he's like, no, no, the pattern says. Yeah, the pattern, the, the, yeah, the, the pattern was weird, mate. So, yeah, he worked, I'm sure he worked at by the week back to front. So, I'm guessing it's Wednesdays or it's a Sunday. But if the pattern did not fall right, you weren't allowed to do anything. I'm, I'm, I don't know if whether it was like a holy day or like a, a blessed day or whatever. He seen this day as, but if the pattern didn't fall right, you were not allowed to do anything. And I swear to God, like the pattern was like on was a random day, it was like a Tuesday. So nobody, nobody for a year and a half guessed what this pattern actually was. It was, it still baffles me to this day. A game was on the sat, a, a game was on the Saturday, but the pattern was on the Tuesday. That, I don't know. Don't know it. No one ever asked, like, what's this pattern? Every day, what is the pattern? So you like, the pattern is so you pay, yeah, the day after, yeah, this is the Monday, this is the Tuesday, the Tuesday is the pattern. And everyone was like, well, well, no, surely Sunday is the pattern. Sun- surely Sunday is the day that you have your rest and you, you go again. They like, no, no, Tuesday, Sunday is the day for I can recover. I, I honestly I still don't know this day. What, what it was only one day off a week. And, uh, if we were lucky, we win a lot. You know, the the, the pattern, <laughs> the pattern didn't let, didn't allow him many days off. Do you think this when you're at a club like Rangers and it's like under that pit, you need you need time away for the place, don't you? you do I? I think I think he, he got caught up in like being at the club every day, every day, work, 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 work. I remember coming back from pre-season, mate. We we're doing like triple sessions at seven in the morning. He had been like six o'clock, in for six, train, breakfast, train, lunch, train. He was, he was, he was overly obsessed. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, what see when he was like making comments in the media about the dogs and the caravans and that? Like, what, what are you saying? What, what are you saying? <laughs> at that point, at, at that point, thinking what chance we got. If he, he's gone, we're gone. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if he's if he's comparing cats and dogs to caravans or whatever he's doing, like, it was that's that's what I think he, he realized. Like, he's he's struggling to cope with all this going on because you he, he was. Clearly, on one, he's just a madman. When he like took them back, <laughs> he the dogs in the caravan. Like, would he give you voice speeches like that? He, he used to like I, I've, I've told you like he, the balls to. He used to relate random stuff to to like bills. You, 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 you compare like players to I, I can't even remember. He used to compare players to, like just random 
events at certain times in, in life and stuff like that. And everyone's like, well, how do you compare the person to like an event that happened 30 years ago in your country? Like, I, I don't get it. And yeah, honestly, I, I think he just, he was just so complex and caught up in his, in his way. He just, he just didn't make, he didn't make any sense, mate. <laughs> but see, the thing is, so like, and on this madness, like you scored 16 goals that year, like, so did yeah. the parts of your game that you improved or was it just, it was a good season for you? Um, no, I, I, I think it was like kind of, I had a good, I had a good, I was enjoying playing, like I was scoring goals and stuff. I don't think he necessarily, necessarily improved as a player. He, he had a lot of faith and there's a lot of trust in this because he played as, played as in a lot of games. I just think it was just, I, I don't know, but I, I think I was still going off what I learned from from Warburton and you know, playing that style of playing. We were still, when we played good football, it was, it was from the previous pattern of players that we were doing from the previous manager, do you know what I mean? So we're still creating chances and opportunities and, and I'm known as scoring a few pens up in Scotland, so I think it was penalties as well. So. <laughs> what about, see, just on like coaching my straight up, was, was training strange as well? Yeah, but, but it, was, it was long, it was very continental, long days, patterns of players. Yeah, I remember them being out there for a long time, being drained, coming in, like it was, it was tough. Right, why'd you leave Rangers, mate? Uh, reason behind that, did you want to stay? <laughs> um, I, 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 would, I would like to have stayed, but I spoke to, I spoke to Pedro actually, and he brought in... He brought in Alfredo. He brought in um, what's the other guy called? The other striker, the big guy. Uh, he brought in him. Um, Dalcio came in, and he said, "He said to us, listen now. I see these two were ahead of you." I said, "Well, to be honest, I disagree with that. I feel like I'm better than 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 one of them. Like I feel like I should still be part of it and play and prove wrong." He's like, "Well." I appreciate that, but there's an opportunity for it to go. Do you want to go? And I said, well, if you if you if you if you're telling us that I'll not play as much, no, it's because we we'll, we'll had the European games didn't we? We played yes. we had the first leg and the second. I didn't play the second leg. You played off Red on the second leg, and uh, I can't forget. I forgot the other guy's name. The time, but who was it? No, the centre half wasn't he? God, also. No, I remember the sticker you're talking about. I remember you on. Yeah. So it, then he came on. I think. Then, Herrera. Herrera, yeah, yeah, Herrera, that was it. Then he came on, so I went to see him, I said, listen, I, I feel like I, I don't, we didn't win the first leg, we drew, but I feel like I done well, why didn't I play? He's like, well, I, I say these two ahead of you, like, these are my signs now. I said, well, I feel like I could still, like, do a job for you, like, I am I'm feel like I'm good enough for the team. And he said, there's a team, there's a team interested in you, like, I feel like these two are going to be me, me two main strikers, and if you want to go, you can go. I was like, well, if that's the way it is, then... I, I'm not going to sit around and try and force you to do something that you don't want to do. Then I'll, I'll, I'll go and play. I, I understand that. Like, at least I appreciate you being honest with us. Some others are just kind of dragged us along and just kept us there from the right. You know what I mean? So, do you like being disrespectful? Was, was that Dalsil and Herrera miles off it? Like compared to yes, yourself? Uh, personally, I feel so. Yeah, I feel like they were they were nowhere near it. I, I kind of reflect on how many games to play and how many goals to score. I feel like I could have done a better job and it would have been nice. I feel like me and Alfredo, Alfredo was really raw at the time. We scored a lot of goals. I feel like when we were trained together and training, we worked quite well together. Do you know what I mean? It would have been, yeah. it would have been quite a good, a good partnership, I feel, but that's just the way it is. And at that time, I wasn't playing. There was an opportunity to move and I was struggling a bit mentally as I've made, as I made a way. So I thought maybe it's the, the time to move on and make, get a new challenge. So was it still a bit emotional to leave a, a club besides Rangers? Yeah, I was, I was good, to be honest. Obviously, it's a massive club. Um, I, I personally feel like I didn't achieve enough what I set out to do. I feel like I could have done a lot more. I could have won a lot more. And if I had the opportunities to, to do so, I would have maybe done a lot better. Um, injuries, um, off-field issues kind of had an effect. And maybe it was the, the time for me to go, but... Don't get us wrong. I, I I was sad to leave the place. I was leaving good friends behind. I made a lot of good lot of good friends here. I love playing for the club. I love playing for the for the state in front of the fans of the stadium. You know what I mean? It's it's somewhere that I you'll never not many people often get to say they've they've played and, and done so. So it was always going to be sad. It was difficult, but I had to make the decision and, and, and move on. Right, mate. So you go for Pedro to big Mike McCarthy, who is a total character. I love him. Any good yeah. McCarthy stories for us? Um, I, I don't, to be honest. 
I, I heard a lot about him. You, you see the videos and stuff from online and whatever. But you, you, when I got there, I, I, I got a completely different impression about him. I was thought he's going to be this this madman. Do you know what I mean? But what what a nice guy. He, he was very laid back, very calm, very relaxed. And is he is he laid back in camera? Huh? Re, really, really surprises. I'm thinking. I'm, I, I remember going there, and um, so I, I, remember, I remember saying that I, I left. Mate, I left Glasgow at two o'clock in the morning. I had a, a seven-hour drive there, switched to doing medical. So um, I remember driving down there. I was absolutely not going. He's like, well, "Are you ready to travel?" And I was like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "I've only just I've travelled nine hours. I'm knackered. I'm not." He's like, "No, no, you're travelling. You've got to, got to watch tomorrow. Like gluten in the cup. I need to I need to pay." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." He's like, but he like, pulls it off. He's like, "Don't worry, everything's going to be all right." I know you've had a, like a an indifferent year, so but I. I I've you for a number of years, whatever, I've always watched you and just, just go and play your game. And I thought he was going to be a lot more intense and like expect a lot more, a lot, demand a lot more. So I'm quite relaxed with him, have a good chat, play a game. And then come the, come the weekend, so we used to do um, like a, an old V Young on a, on a Friday before the before the game. And um, so for the first time, sorry, I say, oh, can I have a number nine shirt? Like I, I see myself as a striker, I want the number nine shirt. It's like, yeah, yeah, like it's... It's a big number, like, are you prepared to play? I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, like, it's fine, it's only a number to me. So, like, in the next the next week, we're doing all the young, and um, the, the old team gets absolutely bad. I've missed a couple of chances, and this is before I even make my debut. And then he goes, he pulls us, he pulls us in his office, he's like, do you think that's good enough? I was like, what? He's like, your performance on that today. I was like, um, I, I didn't really think about it, to be honest, like, it was absolutely crappy. And if you think my number nine's performing like that for me, then you got another thing coming. I was like, oh, oh shit, I best put my finger on shit, do you know what I mean? Wow. But then, yeah, like that's kind of how it was. And like, I, I kind of never looked back with my relationship with him. And you, you mate, what, what, a, what a top guy he is. I've got nothing but high praise to say from me. Really, really good guy. See, see when you go for like 55,000 every week, that intensity, is it, is it yeah. easy to go and play for like, obviously, I'm such a massive club, mate. They've done yeah. well on so I'm, I'm going there every day. You're like, it's a very family oriented club. Not much like stick or abuse. Fans just turn up, support you, and go home. And it was it was a complete contrast. And probably at the time, it's probably what I needed to get away from the the, the animosity and the drama and everything that come with playing for Rangers and the times I was going through. We won't play for a club that just kind of. Bit of stability. The manager has got a style of play. I kind of fit into that, and it was a very family oriented club, and it worked perfectly for me and me, my wife and me and my son to, to go down there and feel settled straight away. So it kind of it worked out. I can't can't thank them highly enough because it kind of got me to to be moving where I am now. Uh, and he quit quite dramatically after the game in April. What were the players? Can you can you talk us through when he quit? Do you remember him quitting? Yeah, it was bizarre. He, he pulled with it. So we we what clapping the fans off him. I, I remember a couple of times he, he was getting a lot of stick in the press or the fans were on him, whatever. We played Brentford away and he's meant to come on the coach and all the fans are waiting for him to have a go at him and give him a bit of stick, but he's he's pulled off in his car, like on the other side of the stadium and he pulled in on the on the money thing. I th- I think I'm I think I'm gonna leave, I think I'm done, like I don't deserve I don't deserve this, like it's it's unacceptable. And um, it's it's the next game, the midweek game where we're playing. I can't remember who we're playing, but he pulls one the, the pitch on the, the full time and has the the meeting after the game. And he goes, "That's that's me, lads. I'm done." And we're like, "What?" He goes, "Yeah, like that's that's my last game." So we all go in, and um, he goes, "Yeah, that's that's my time done." Yeah, they're just like, "So like, what? You're leaving?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going next week. I'm done." And everyone's like, "That is the most bizarre resignation." Leaving of a club I've, I've ever met, but he, he kind of he wore his heart on his sleeve. He's like, I don't deserve this. And like you, you players don't deserve this. He, he, he kind of respected us enough to say, you are going out there week in week out in front of fans that are giving me stick, and I shouldn't put that on you. It's like if fans want to change, and I'll I'll do that for the fans. I'll do that for the club, and I'll do that for the owner. And most importantly, you as players deserve a bit of respect and a bit of support from the fans. And if they are going to give that, then. I'll leave and hopefully they can they can push these on because there's a group of players who deserve that and a lot of the a lot of the people in Ipswich I don't think realise how how good he was for the club. And That's what I was going to say. Probably the worst decision. Yeah, you worked on a budget for so long and 
the players he recruited just because who he was and the personality he was. He brought so many good players to the club that essentially they couldn't probably have got without him. And you look at look at the grasses and always green as I say it, it's it just went backwards ever since. Uh, and you scored 16 goals again, mate. You love those 16 goals. Uh, yeah. 16 goals in the champ, mate. Do you know you're getting a move? Huh? Like, did your agent say you're a good <laughs> man? Yeah, he was like, if you had, double, if you had 15 goals, I can, I can get you moved. But at, at that point, that wasn't really the forefront of my mind. I'd moved to get settled again and, and settled somewhere and enjoy my football. But then when, when the gaffer left, it was, um, I was like, I've, I've, I've got an opportunity to leave here and if it comes across then I'll look into it and it was one of them times where the manager I'd left would brought in I think a lot of players were kind of out of contract at the time so the, the team was going to change again mm. and I didn't know how it was going to how it was going to sit then obviously we brought in we brought in Paul Hurst who had his own way of playing again wanted to bring in a lot of, a lot of players and a lot of players left and it just wasn't it just wasn't kind of where where I seen myself and where we were where the year before, and then obviously Derby and and, and Frank Lampard came in, and from when when I heard of that interest, I was like, "That's me done. I've, I've got I've got to go. I'm out of here." Mate, it's mad for any young player watching this. Like, you can go for a year, and Dalcio and Herrera are ahead of you. <laughs> A year later, signing for nine million quid. That's so it's mental, isn't it? How- yeah, it's, it's crazy. And I think that's kind of that's why I've got I've got to give my family, myself, and the move a bit of credit because it, it gave me a platform to get to go and play and, and go and enjoy enjoy playing as a striker and scoring goals and do what I do. And it's give me it give me the opportunity to to go and do that. That's why I think that like uh, Mick uh, the gaffer for giving me that chance to go and play and, and do that and it's 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 where I am now because of that opportunity to go and move and, and, and do that really. Be honest with you when you hear it's nine more you're buzzing at her. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it, it was nice. It was nice obviously the when I heard of the, the, the fee coming in obviously that's that's not obviously my my decision. Obviously the, the chairman from Ipswich had a had a, a fee in mind and the the clubs have got to agree on that, and obviously, I, I just wanted to get it done. I spoke there, I spoke to Frank on the phone a couple of times. Like, sorry, to you. What was he like when you first spoke to him on the phone? Oh, mate, I, I, I had this, I had a text from me just saying, Oh, the Frank's going to call you and to speak to you, but I didn't know when, where or where it was going to be. So, I was waiting by my phone. I, I went to play, I went to play some golf. So, I'm, I'm putting for a birdie. I like, I'm thinking, Oh, I've got to get, I get a phone call. I'm thinking, Oh, god, it's Frank. I can't, I can't hang out for a birdie. So, I, 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 I pick up, he's like, Oh. I I waggy it um, it's Frank and I'm thinking oh god like yeah cousin yeah where do I sign where how how do I how do I get up there and, and honestly you just you turn open he's like I seen you play last year I seen what you done um I spoke to the manager about you you you, were, you seem to be a great lad and we want you at the club we're just trying to get it over the line and kind of that was it really and within a, within a matter of days I was I was up in Derby and, and, and the deal was done. I always wanted to ask you this. See, when you sign for Frank, do you, do you get to go to his house and have dinner or that? <laughs> no, I've, I've never once signed for a manager and went to his house and had dinner or a glass of wine. I, I would take it. It would be nice to, nice to have a glass of nice, nice red every now and then, to be honest. But no, I've never, I've never went to anybody's house or like that. What, uh, what about him as a manager? Is he, is he top class? I mean, it just his knowledge of the game and, again, how he played the game and how he, and how he wanted to play football kind of was so to me. It was kind of like a similar philosophy to, to Warburton, a high press, high tempo, play football. And I fit in, I fit in into that bill. Um, don't get us wrong, I, st- I started really slowly actually. I, I, I was in and out of the team. I, I probably wasn't as much fit as what I thought I was. I played a lot of pre-season, but to the level that he wanted us to be, I probably wasn't at it. And I had a, I had a chat with him in, in one of the breaks and said, I, I, I'll work hard I need to do what I can to get the team and I kind of never looked back since he was, he was dead open to um, so wait, sorry, to you went to him and said that? yeah I, I hadn't played much I was like what do you need us to do to get the team and what do you want us to do to, to get to get in, in your plans really and said just keep doing what you're doing work a bit harder and, and, and your time will come but again we, we were again we were fortunate we had, we had good players in front we had um, big Big Davy Nugent, who is he's a good friend of mine. Who I was fighting with, we just signed Jack Maria too. He'd scored goals, and the, the team was doing well. So I tried to be patient and wait for my time. And 
I got I got the opportunity and I, I never kind of I never kind of looked back. And then the playoff final, mate. Like, again, yeah, another year later, two years ago, Rangers with Dalcio yeah. in the Premier League. How how hard is it to lose in a in a championship final? Yeah, it was it was very difficult because again we we're, we're, we're doing it the hard way. We we give ourselves a lot of the climb in the in the in the semi finals and to to come through that. What was, a game was, was sorry, what a game that was. was. It was incredible. What what a what a game what that was. You obviously Ellen Road is a you know, that stadium filled with history and to go there after all the kind of dynamics they had done throughout the season, giving it a, giving it a big in and stuff like that. It was nice to go and nice to go and get the win there and, and turn them over, but. Again, I feel like the game was there to be taken on in the final and we kind of let that one slip, unfortunately. Sorry, I'm going off script here as well. I'm just fascinated to know. See when like, the spy thing happened? We, we yeah. <laughs> he was raging. He was raging. I all the way because it was just like, it, 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 the lowest of the lowest spying on the team to, spying on the team to get tactics. And we, we, we made a wave that they've done it like numerous times. And we, it, was, it was like, a, I don't know, in football, it's like, it's a bit unsportsmanship in it. They go and spy on that position. We just wanted to turn them over so much. It was in the back of our minds. We need we need to beat these because the way our, they're an Oregon they're an Oregon team. The way they played, they thought they'd kind of run it. The way they beat were at our pace, and then thought they could turn up on that day and just turn them over. It was it was it was nice to nice to do them over. Mate, we're, we're, we should have made the tea join in as well. Oh, mate, we went nuts. Obviously, we're. Be as everything after the game in the gym room. We got back home. We went to the we, we, we got back to the pub. We kept the pub open. We were there all night, mate. It was it was it was some party. Like it was it was decent. When he's having a beer in that way, does he tell you about the Chelsea stories? Nah, he, he, he wasn't. He's not that kind. Of, not that kind of person. If you if you asked him, you could speak to him and tell you about it. But he was he was just he was dead dead normal about it. He'd, he'd appreciated like kind of what he'd achieved and what he'd done, but he never. I remember, <laughs> I remember scoring me me hundredth goal in the in the in the chat in the, in the football career. I, I can't remember who it was against. He was like, "Oh, well done, Waggy! Like good achievement that." He's like, "Come back to the score two hundred in the prem." <laughs> oh, <laughs> Cheers, Gaff. I appreciate that. But no, he, he's, he's like he's just like a dead normal dead normal guy who just wanted to. Um, play football in the right way and it kind of, I think the Leeds thing what you he was buzzing about it was something that you wanted to do and turn them over we kind of kind of celebrating in the, in the right way. How was he in training? How was Lampard in training? Join in the um, Yeah he was class, couldn't get the ball off him. <laughs> he'd, he'd join in like you'd be like a floater or like a spare man and you'd just pop the ball on before the lads are chasing shadows at times. It was it was tough. But like it's his, his finishing and his technique was was a joke. He was you could hit the ball alright, to be fair, then you could hit it well. Oh, what a, stri- what a striker of the ball. And then another big name, Philip Cocker, he's played for some big all midfielders as well. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. have you done under him, mate? Yeah, Joe, it, it was not too dissimilar in terms of the style of player. I think that's kind of what the, the owner wanted to bring in. Somebody who had the same philosophy, play football. Um, another another person who had a great uh, great pedigree, great, great career, footballing career. And... For us to go from someone like Lampard to Cogge was it was another big name. It was it was excitement for the club, and uh, when he when he first came in, it gave everybody a buzz. He wanted to play football. Everyone had a fresh start, clean slate, and he wanted to play football in the right way, which was good for me. He wanted to press. He wanted to press high, work hard, and that kind of how I, how I played the previous couple of years and the Mick and and, and and the Gaffer. So. For me, it was it was a way to just keep progressing again and, and, and learn from another another top player. And again, I mean, this is one of my favourite players of all time, Wayne Rooney, man. Like, yeah, for me, yeah, man, the most underrated player ever. Eh? Yeah, I, I remember. I remember we were. I think it was the first game of the season, right? We we just played played on the field ball on Twitter, and everyone gets like this notification saying, "Oh, Derby and talks to sign Wayne Rooney," and everyone's like. Nah, come on, that's that's bad for that. That's got to be one of them fake accounts, whatever. And then we like, a couple of days later, we we start bothering with the with the with the coaches. You know, is that is that Rooney going in? Is he, is he on his way? And he's just like, I don't know, maybe. And then like do like little stuff like this starts dropping. Then we then we see we see a press conference of um, of Waza <laughs> signing for Derby, and like. How on earth have we managed to get to get, to get Win Rooney at Derby? But yeah, for, for me being a United fan growing up and 
watching him watching him go uh, up as a player was was incredible to see him see him come in and, and train with a day in day out was 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 was, was class. Has he, has he done stuff that you just thought, wow? Me, you, you 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 would you would play passes where you would think that's not even on. Like you you do something with his I don't know with his head or his foot, and it would be like. How have you even seen that first and foremost? Never mind done it. I think it's just like that's how he got to the highest level of just thinking on a different level and seeing the game in different ways where other people don't. He zings everything, doesn't he? He zings. Yeah, that's right, yeah. But now, like he's he's obviously changed position now to to where he was ten ten years ago or so, and just dictates play, gets the ball. It just he get he gets the ball going for us, keeps the game ticking. Makes makes clever passes and movements, and just he's someone that you can just trust with the ball when you're in a difficult situation. So for us, with a lot of the young kids coming through, he's been invaluable in terms of helping them progress into the first team. Uh, do, sorry, I keep talking about him, but does he, does he can he crack up? Like, have you people are not to stand there? Yeah, but he, he, he's done, he's done it quite a few times. I remember we we're getting away, getting beat to, to Luton away, and we no sorry we were winning, and then the last five ten minutes we lose. Two goals to lose, three two, and he just he, <laughs> he boots like where the tea's in the coffee. I boots the table, and like this coffee flask goes all over one of the coaches, and like the coffee is like dripping off his nose and his top lip. And, like I'm, I'm, I'm pissing myself. I'm, like obviously the loser's dressing room's tiny, and like it's there and there. I'm thinking, don't get caught laughing. So I'm putting my top like this, and, the, and like this coach is like non descending green with was I like this. Coffee and milk dripping all over his grid, like off his jacket and everything. But he's, he's done it quite a few times. Like he just demands the best from everyone. Again, if, if people aren't people aren't willing to, to work on, he, he, he takes them out in games and stuff. Like don't get us wrong with training. He's not that. He's not that aggressive, and he's not that vocal. And in terms of digging people up on match days when when he's playing and he wants to win, then he has he has to go up people when they're not ready. But that made that coffee cup. It was the funniest thing ever. He's done. <laughs> so he's undergoing like all the eye, you know, like the iPads and the tactics that they dredge with this coach. It's like so serious of just milk dribbling off his nose. Next <laughs> thing is, he's still nodding in the game, though. So he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, was I? That's mate, so, was I? He's so true there. Like, he's coughing, everything dribbling all over, protein, protein bars all over his grid. <laughs> have, you, have you boxed him yet now? Does he do the boxing? No, nah, nah, I've not boxed him yet. I might, oh, I might give, I might give, I might give the goal now, he's a bit older. <laughs> uh, right, mate, just the future. What, um, desperate to get to the Premier League, Jenk, you'll do it one day? Hopefully. Um, I, th- I think with, with, the, with the club that we are, we're set up to be, to be a Premier League club. The, the facilities, the stadium, the training ground that we've got, um, the staff that we've got, the players, we've got a real good mix. Is is a goal in my career. It's always kind of where I want to be. I want to get a chance to get back in the Premier League and give it, give it another goal. And what about after football? You want to be a manager? No, I don't. I don't think I'll be a manager. My, my wife and I have said about me being a coach, but I think I'll just take a break for a while. I would really like the uh, my wife studying to be a to be a lawyer. So hopefully she oh, can you're solid, mate. She, 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 she can take the reins for a few years, so I can get myself on the golf course and get me get the handicap down. But I think I'll probably just take a break for a year or so, assess everything and. Like I say, hopefully she, she, can, she can do the rest of the work for four or five years. Only guys, my name's Gold Million Pound Mookie. That's me, John. Yeah, Talk, man. Thanks very much, mate. Nah, nah, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.